right, it's time to get into wow. Monday Night Raw for June 11th, 2007. We are going to talk about The Observer, but before we get to it, uh, it is a lot about the Vince McMahon limo part at the end, so I think we're just going to save it to the end. Yes. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. All of it is uh, is all that, right? Yeah, good idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, before we get into that, let's get into this fucking Raw. You love this show, dude. You kept you kept messaging me. Wow, great choice, Johnny. Glad we watched. Dude, the this first one. thing he messaged was this. Uh, this is a three hour raw. What's going on here? We'll go. <laughs> <laughs> Not only three hour raw, also complete dog shit. <laughs> well, I, so, listen, I knew one part of that. I didn't know the other. Oh, I didn't know the complete dog shit. dog shit. Just uh, you know, hundred percent. Okay, shit. let let me let me let me let's just talk. Ninety eight percent dog shit. Yeah, there's a lot of dog shit on the show. If you watch this shit in 2007 oh, no. <laughs> if you actually I'm think sorry, if you I'll actually think all right, I, just wanna, I just want uh, so sure. to listen sure. this is legitimately no joke probably one of the worst raws of all time and I'm not I'm not kidding and I just want you no, know it, I want to be clear with that it is boring it, it yeah. is so boring it's not even like bad and like oh I didn't like it because of this it was just very boring none yeah. of the none of the matches were very good there was maybe like none one good match and the main event match makes no fucking sense at all. Yeah, so just bad. All right, and I just want to say this also for because you know two, we've done what is this the first time we've done two thousand seven or second? Fucking some, hell. Some other uh, I don't remember. But yeah, we've done a couple. If you watched Raw in two thousand seven, and this was like your main era of Raw, you should get together with the other people that watched two thousand seven <laughs> Raw and start a class action lawsuit against Vincent Mann because you would probably win right now. This shit should not have been on you TV. You have been corrupted. If this is what you grew up on, you may be entitled to compensation. This is this is bad. Dude, <laughs> like, crazy. It is so fucking bad. So, just so you guys know ahead of time, this was a Oh my God! There's got to be. We are talking about. We're about to be on the mission of finding one good raw into this fucking era. <laughs> <laughs> we're about to be on a mission, fellas. You know this raw got a 3.8 rating. Um, That's crazy. so. There's a lot of you. I'm telling you, you could probably win that lawsuit. Yeah, people were still watching. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. There's all, and you know what? A lot of people that watched during this era listen to this. Like this was like their era. Yeah, of WWE because there's no other way. We always get requests for this era. There's no other way you like SmackDown versus Raw 2008 unless this was your era. So, uh, here's the deal. Sorry. And I'm sorry. I'm very, very 100%. sorry. I'm about realized. to start playing SVRO here soon, too. I know you're already playing it. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, yeah. It's not going That's great. That's a whole other conversation. For another I want to watch it, but I don't remember the game. So I'm trying to like go in blinder, but I, I bring it. I, I wrote down a few notes it. here from, from playing it. So I'll bring it up every oh, once in a while. Okay. Great. Stuff. Okay. Great. Uh, but great. yeah, um, man, they weren't even fucking trying. They weren't even fucking trying. Like you no. could compare this to any of the raws that we've done in the past or whatever, or it, literally, <laughs> this, literally any of them. And like this is the, this is the longest we've ever prefaced the review. I just want to make sure I get this out there <laughs> that this show sucked. <laughs> but anyway, so cold open here starts it off. Uh, yes. Raw opens with Vince with his little reading glasses with a piece of paper. He is uh, stoic. Is that the way you put it? He's. Uh... He's just kind of standing there. I wrote down awkward bastard. <laughs> sure. All right. That works. <laughs> Absolutely works there. That's good. So I can only imagine that whatever is written on this paper is not what he is saying out loud. I don't think there's anything written on there. Is there? I don't there's know. At the words. very top in bold, it said dog shit taco. <laughs> <laughs> From what I read. <laughs> oh, well, I wish you would have said that then. I was, yeah, sorry about that. So that he's been do. acting um, weird for a while. Since was it since he lost his hair or since he lost the ECW title? ECW title, and that's a lot of this. He is super fucking weird here, more weird than usual. He's usually a weird bastard, but he's you know very quiet and shaky and just little weird guy here with the shaved little head. Whoa, I'm never giving up. Whoa, I'm never giving. <laughs> oh, he also gives like a big speech saying, uh, I mean, I've written down if you want me to read it, but it's just a bunch of fucking nobody says, uh, yeah, <laughs> what's the year that? It's just the base. <laughs> Tonight is the draft. It's also a McMahon appreciation night and also unscripted, uncut comments from the people that, yeah, he's, he's in, he says he's, uh, in complete control of his faculties and, uh, you'll hear and see comments from people that have crossed paths with him over the years. 
Uh, his family won't be involved because it's not fair because he wants a true representation of what the world feels about him. And it'll be the defining moment of his life. And he just looks at the camera and stares at it. Whoa! You know, I'm never gonna be loved. It's I, uh, universe I, mode ass intro, bro. I feel like I've come around on it. I'll be honest with you. I didn't like it at the time. I feel like I, I actually like this intro. I don't nah, like that's cool. it. Don't you don't like, like it at all? I think it's cool. I, I think it's cool because I played the game so much. And Compared like to yeah, like yeah, coming back times. and get the drugs, the money, or like anything sure. else is like, man. No, you're like, right. You're right. Hey, on a list, this ain't beating fucking none of that shit. <laughs> no. right. I still got respect for Papa Roach. You know, I got some respect for the pops. You um, know, so yeah. I'm, I'm cool with this intro. Yeah. I, well, yeah, I'm sure. The video was cool. Yeah. I mean, you know, Carlito, all the stars are here. Yeah, you know, Maria is on there. And, uh, <laughs> Got them all here on Raw. Sitino it's no burn and, it to the ground, you know. That probably may be the worst. Burn it to the ground. Ooh, Dirty, which one is burn it to the ground? We've done this seg, and I just don't remember what we... Yeah. Burn, Nickelback. Burn it to the ground and burn it to the ground. That was 2010 or whatever. Suck dick, suck balls, ass out. You remember that one? That's works for me, brother. Or the current SmackDown theme that you know, James. The one that you said wasn't real or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. Wow, we did we do had this, this segue. Before. Yeah, yeah. It's been a long time. Oh. <laughs> that's, the, that's good. <laughs> uh, well, anyways, Jim Ross and Jerry Lawler say that this is Mr. McMahon Appreciation Night, and then they mm. introduce the other commentators. Of course, JBL and Michael Cole from SmackDown, and Michael Cole full SmackDown era. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> JBL's pretty fucked up too. Uh, yeah, it's and fucked up team here. Taz and Joey Styles from ECW. Yes, it is the first ever tri-branded draft. If you win a match tonight, you win a draft pick for your show, and then that pick will be made at random uh, immediately after the match. So, are there no, who's the general managers at these times? Uh, Jonathan Coachman and Teddy Long. How did Coach and, and Armando Estrada maybe was he, was he the ECW or is one? It, Taron Terrell around yet? No. Armando, mm. was he the GM at the time? I don't even know. Does he even have a GM on ECW? Maybe. They might, it might, was it? No, because Paul Heyman just got fired in December. So I don't know if they had one at all. <laughs> Figuring it out. Uh, every WWE superstar is eligible, including the champions. Well, by the way, JBL and Michael Cole are on SVR 2008 commentary for SmackDown. I don't okay. know if JBL was like sick when he recorded or whatever, but this guy, <laughs> these lines that he read were so bad. Are they hollow or was it, it just, was just sounds bad. weird? You, when you play, okay. you'll know what I'm talking about. It's oh, great. I don't want to play. Yeah, well, you to. are probably. So. Yeah, I am. I have uh, so, yeah, draft night and then the winners get whatever. It sounds awesome. I fucking love the draft. It sounds fun. Giving matches reasoning for happening. I'm like, oh, this will be a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, Do you remember, speaking of the games, was it? 2010 universe there was one of the universes where like this was a thing that would be 12 was random like was it 12 I, swear I, I it happened in 12 uh it probably okay. i mean 12 was pretty much uh 11 yeah. and 10 but just kind of okay i think it started with the first maybe the first universe mode there was like a draft thing and you'd win a match and then you would the guy would so go, i remember the cut scene of like you win a match and then somebody would walk out on the stage mm -hmm. and oh shit they're on my show now yeah because because like, oh, it was listed cool. as like draft match on the thing and then you'd play it and then they'd be like oh yeah, well, toto americano was on uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh we started off the night with john cena versus edge which big fucking match really to start off the show both yeah, huge match actually both the champions of both shows and like these guys have surely been feuding for a while at this point yeah right? they already had their reverie i believe right the big uh... oh it's already done okay yeah sure uh i at first i was like okay well why why are they not doing triple threats not that i really need to see triple mm, threats all yeah, night i know what you're saying but wouldn't it make more sense for all the brands to be represented in the matches why I, is it only sometimes? i agree i didn't even think about that but you're right yeah, uh, I mean, also, kind of I would love to see John Cena versus Edge versus Tommy Dreamer. <laughs> hey, go on. ECW champion is Bobby Lashley. That would have been just fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got a banger coming up tonight, brother. So oh, he's not working God. this fucking match. <laughs> fucking hell. Uh, the 50 50 reaction for Cena, maybe even less, maybe 60 40. Uh, he's. They're definitely coming around here. Uh, but, of course, you can see Cena on Conan O'Brien this Thursday. And Jerry Lawler says, oh, it's on NBC. And Jerry says, well, of course it's on NBC. <laughs> He's already <laughs> fucking over. He says it's been a long night. Three hours. <laughs> <laughs> Three hours are all. Fuck out of here, You see man. the video yeah. on Twitter going around from Trimoon where it was like them playing the My Sacrifice video. And Jerry's like, 
Oh, and here we go. We got my sacrifice for the 89th time. To <laughs> Everybody get your tissues. <laughs> <laughs> Those videos are awesome. Yeah, I miss Tri Moon. Man. Beast, Tri -Moon. Oh, I do too. Those yeah, are the best. Fucking hell, man. Tri Moon was super cool. So John Cena versus Edge here. Uh, you know, we talked about it before because like we always talk about Edge and Christian and how like, you know, Edge was always the more popular one, even though I'm pretty much we all agree that Christian was way cooler always. Yeah, hell yeah, so. hell yeah, hell yeah. yeah. But Seeing this motherfucker like in this era of WWE, if this was your era of WWE, you know, how could yeah. you not think this is the best wrestler on the, the fucking coolest show? Dude, yeah, dude, he sticks out like a fucking sore thumb. Like he is so cool here. Yeah, hundred percent. The other champions are like Deuce and Domino and fucking uh, <laughs> Trevor Murdoch Santino. and Lance Cade and Santino. <laughs> yeah. It's like shit. Edge comes out big ass ring jacket, big gold fucking pyro at the wazoo, cool crazy hair. song, yeah. licensed music. Bro, <laughs> yeah, he had it yeah. all in this area yeah, for sure. He's the complete opposite of John Cena. Yeah, absolutely. That's his whole character. Yeah, um, which is awesome. which I thought we were going to get a cool match. I was like, damn, we're going to get a pretty cool match for whatever yeah, it was worth. Was... Cena's, you know, Cena was still working crazy at this time. Some of his matches, yeah, he was oh five, oh six, oh seven. I mean, he has some bangers, but whew, they told everybody they, tonight, uh, hey, you better slow it the fuck down. Dude, we got three this hours. Was like <laughs> the mail in match of the century. Yeah, like. They like totally were just hoping the crowd would just be there because of how popular the two are. But even then, they lost the crowd by the end of this. And I feel like th it they lose the crowd for the rest of the night after this. Yeah, match, for sure. Because they did like the the finish is what fucks it all up. I think. Well, dude, the finish is strange. Um, it pans to the crowd here in the start, yes. and the crowd is just kids. kids with their dads just sitting there hating their fucking lives. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a rough era, man. Yeah, it's <laughs> this tough, is rough. Man. This uh, is a real like you know we talk about how John Cena you know was a big you know he was like the kids love John Cena. Yeah, sure. and like you, there's a reason John Cena was on top for so long is because dude, legit this Name like money. You know it, it's it's hard to sometimes visualize how the crowd changed over the years, mm -hmm. but like the pan out to the kids with their dads oh. was yeah, like this is a perfect wow. representation of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was yeah, like holy crazy. man, this is crazy. The entire front row is just kids. Yeah, absurd. Yeah, that was uh, the whole era was just like, hey, uh, I want to go. I want your kids to come, and then the parents have to pay too, so you get double tickets. Yeah, yeah, time. right. <laughs> Great marketing, actually. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Okay, so first thing I wrote down here for this, like the match got started, right? And like yeah. we're like midway through the match. This is the first thing I wrote about the match. Who picked this fucking show? You made me watch this match, <laughs> and for that, you will pay for your transgressions <laughs> against Christ. <laughs> This shouldn't have been bad. Because the first thing, the bad. first thing I fucking realized was this is a three-hour raw. Second thing I fucking realized was that this is the shitty draft. Third thing I fucking realized no. after halfway through this match was that they're not gonna do anything tonight. No, dude, they don't, bro. It shouldn't have been bad. Looking at it on paper, it should not. No, have been you're right. And I, you're right. But I was pissed but at I the agree. time. I, I said, "Damn I'll it, take dude." It. I'm with you. What's incredible like about this whole thing is. Is Johnny was like, we gotta save this for like a special occasion when we can drop <laughs> this episode. I was so Tony, you're right. I've been like, because we're you were sitting on this one for a while. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like, oh, we'll fucking let's wait a week where we don't gotta do anything and we'll just fucking do. We'll this do it right around the holidays. It'll sweet. be awesome. Oh, yeah. it'll be sweet. Yeah, dude, I've been I've been so excited to watch this piece of shit show. Well, thankfully, so I, I boys, apologize. John Cena's got the embroidered joints joints on. He's got the fucking he's got the emblem at the bottom. He's got Got the words. I mean, hey man, he was rocking. John Cena was uh he had it all. He feeds the buckle, uh, and this and edge hits him with the grime line. <laughs> 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 yes. We like that. Yeah, I like Edge that. Is a lot. Up next. Uh, You're up never, John Cena. I also realized that uh I don't and maybe it's maybe it just was this uh an off night here, but uh Edge not a punch guy. Not a punch guy at all. Not a forearm guy, he, not a lot no. of things guy. He actually, throws that some edge. strange punches here. Not a spear guy. No, not him. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, Edge at one point hits uh, Jr. is already over this. I feel like very early yeah. on here, and oh, he's yeah. like, Edge hits Cena with a big clothesline, and Jr. Says, oh, Edge hit Cena with a, a clothesline, slobber knocker style. I said, yeah. What the yeah, fuck does that mean? That. <laughs> yeah, now I don't know if you noticed this. This was my favorite part of the match. Uh, there's a guy in the crowd holding up a it's a sign. It's a black sign. I think it looks like maybe chalk on it or something. 
and it says suck this and it's just a cock and balls <laughs> <laughs> no I didn't see that just hard kill I did not see that either it, holy I'm pretty sure it's taken away of course I saw it it's taken away I'm pretty sure after this match but yeah he like holds it up the whole match it's just, it's just it's crazy. fat he probably bought fat a fat little cock and balls just suck this he probably bought a chalkboard in the arena and then wrote it as he got in there that's awesome it's probably, it's crazy. probably VKM <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. Hicken bottom. <laughs> just tell me it's cute Kip out there. Oh my. Yeah, well, like it must have been. Balls. It was, no, it was Roxy Laveau. <laughs> Roxy Laveau is actually the mastermind of VK. Voodoo style. Hates WWE. <laughs> <laughs> She brainwashed the New Age Outlaws. Oh, the fuck to hate WWE. WWE. <laughs> oh my god. That's uh, awesome. So, That's yeah, awesome. this yeah. match is a lot of nothing. Sadly, yeah, because they could, have had, a, they could have had a good match. This felt like a, like a house show or like a whatever. House show. Like a dark match. Yeah. Or something. I don't know. It just felt like they were going and then they're like, yeah, we're just going to go nowhere. And then that'll be it. Cena hits the throwback, which I forgot was a move he does. No, that's the John Cena cool. blockbuster. Yeah, what the fuck, JR? Come on, bro. <laughs> We're gonna All right, bro. Yeah, true. Uh, Lawler says, uh, after seeing Cena F you the great golly, you'd believe he's superhuman. It's just crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah, it really it is. <laughs> uh, but yeah, all the classics. Five knuckle shuffle. Eventually, Edge goes for a spear. Cena shit cans him to the floor. Uh, he sets up a fucking... It puts him on the... Or sorry, he takes off... The ECW announce table cover, which I don't know, fucking disrespectful as hell to do that to the ECW announce table. I love how they were like, he, yeah, do the ECW one. Yeah, please do that one. Uh, and then Cena goes to hit the FU off the stairs to Edge, but Edge pushes him off into the table and then gets back into the ring and the referee calls the, for the bell. And I said, what? Holy shit, man. You could hear a pin <laughs> drop in that bitch. Super confused. And then I realized, oh, he got counted out. So, As, dude, Edge, do you understand? Do you understand how pissed I was watching this shit? <laughs> yeah, I was like, was we're gonna do this for eight minutes too. Three hours. We're gonna do this for three hours. That's like, if you do this with John Cena versus Edge, you're gonna do it with every fucking match tonight. Because they they oh, they booked themselves into a corner because they didn't want either champion to look weak. And it's like, why even do the match in the first place? Then if you're just gonna come up with this finish, exactly. And look, it's a good way to keep people tuned in at the start. Oh, Cena versus Edge. Oh, fuck. It got oh, me. Fuck. I was like, damn, they're probably going to have a fun match here to start the show. Yeah. Dude, it would have been better yeah, yeah. if Edge would have, if they would have broken the ECW table and then someone got in the ring and, you know, won by count You're out right, that actually. Way. At least give us the spot. You're right, Tony. What the fuck? We just, don't even get a table. Just do <laughs> Edge spears him to the ECW table and then an Edge comes in and wins by count out. Yeah. Fuck that. Whatever. But nope, yeah. nothing. Yeah, yeah well, dude. Uh, uh, Edge wins and SmackDown gets the first draft pick here and then they bring up a, a graphic on the screen. It's just a just a WWE draft gotcha machine. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. so loud, dude. <laughs> it's like the loudest Tony, noise ever. Holy shit. That's Tony's best impression yet is WWE gotcha machine. <laughs> that's awesome. Dude, he showed those that roster. I was like, this is the like shittiest crop of dicks. She didn't like I'm sorry. <laughs> Come on, bro. It's a stellar list of talent. Dude, the fucking, P the fucking PNGs. The PNGs. <laughs> maybe, maybe your top Dude, five guys off this list, Johnny. Please. Snitsky, Sandman, <laughs> Kelly Kelly. <laughs> all right. All right. Johnny Dude, wins again. Them, so they cut, yeah, they show so they do the big gotcha machine with everyone's heads like little in little boxes. And then they cut to like a faster one with just PNGs, and they're all cut out differently and all different shapes. <laughs> Like there's some Crazy. of the most Mark Henry is wide Mark Henry squish style. <laughs> like for the some wide reason. meme. <laughs> yeah. Greg Holly's hair is not cut out. <laughs> like, just, you can see a bunch of shit behind They're it. Rocking, like, this is they didn't even care I about this. They even had, production I said, think they gave this. production like five minutes to make this. You got Dude. we got we need this tonight. Squish Chris Jericho. <laughs> this whole this whole show. So uh, along with all of this. There's no crowd sweetening on this show. They can't. You're it's right. live, There's pal. Not. We're live. Yeah. No way. They do live it, crowd sweetening all the time now. But there is no crowd. Two seven, they weren't ready for it. No, obviously not. There's no crowd sweetening on the show. Everybody on this show drowns. No one in this arena gives yeah. a fucking shit. No Dude, way. John Cena versus Edge, the two top <laughs> two champions, <world> champions. <laughs> on your fucking top brands is getting 4 million viewers a week. And you can hear a pin drop through most of his match. That's rough, bro. <laughs> yeah. 
and stuff. So they rifle through it. And coming to SmackDown, the great Kali. And they show his big fire. Oh, uh. his big fucking picture. Yeah, that's the only way I can describe oh. it. Oh, God. Great Kali walks out again, Tony. As I you, you said, it, no one is prepared here. Great Kali just walks out. No Tron, no music. And then they put his Tron up. He's just standing there with his Tron playing no music. It's showing Ed shocked and Cena's happy. And then they play his music. It's just, and then Kali's standing there, cum all over his pants. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very wet man. <laughs> what the fuck Dude, happened I here, knew man? when he started with Kali, this was fucked up. The whole show is Dude, fucked up. Dude, I knew up. from the fucking start. I, <laughs> I knew when I saw it on a three-hour run time. Come I knew on. what we were in for. Come on, Kali Bro, started. <laughs> and then I realized they pushed Kali to the moon for a minute. And yeah, Greg Kali's base as hell. What is it? He is awesome. Three-hour raw with fucking... Fucking no crowd sweetening and a bunch of PNGs that were <laughs> well, wet, wet, cummy gray collie stands there for a very <laughs> awkward amount of time with Ranjin Singh next to him. And then Ranjin Singh next, got the crazy haircut. He's oh my God. The side, and the sideburns. Crazy fucking. <laughs> was Kali on Raw? Was he going Raw? Where was he come from? I guess he was. I thought, see, I already He's thought coming he from was New on Japan Smackdown. Pro Wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> Was he at ECW? I don't know where the fuck this guy came was from. Was he undrafted? Where did he, he come from? Who is this guy? <laughs> he debuted on SmackDown for sure, but I then I... I felt I like he was know. always the SmackDown guy, wasn't he not? Dude, well, they kept showing back. us Great Khali from the nipple cam. They got as close <laughs> yeah, as they could to his nipples bottom. and then looked up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, it says... Uh, well, they didn't want to show his cummy pants. It says he came from Deep South. Uh, he, uh, April, he was on he SmackDown. He's on SmackDown. <laughs> And yeah. then he's still on SmackDown. He was drafted <laughs> from Shut OVW. <laughs> Reconfirming that he's, he's on He's still Smackdown. on SmackDown. They don't have... Unless, oh, he went to the ECW brand? And then he... Oh. And then he went back to SmackDown? Is that what happened? That's, or what is he all... That sounds... Or is that not how maybe? it is? Yeah. I guess he was on ECW. Okay, fair enough. When did I'll we do, when did watch well, the Monster Mash thing? Remember that? Wasn't he in that match? Yes. That might have been this same year. Was that 2007? They were rocking. I think so. Yeah, yeah. The Monster Mash. Well, don't worry, Tony, because up next, Governor Jesse Ventura is here to talk about Vince McMahon. Oh, oh my God. Oh my <laughs> God. fucking the craziest. This is the craziest <laughs> shit ever. Dude. Not not me finding out it's a three hour raw draft episode, <laughs> but also Vince McMahon propaganda the whole fucking show. With a video package. Holy shit, man. They show a Vince McMahon history video package showing his hard times coming up and how he worked this hard. This was just the Mr. Bata. McMahon DVD is what it was. It was just brought up. That, You're right. It was, You're right. No, it was footage from that DVD straight up. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah. No, I I believe it. Uh, and then they show a Mr. McMahon Appreciation Night graphic, and then the end of it always zooms in on the song, uh, Vince's theme song ending with, Boo, and then zooming in on Devil Vince eyes. Red so eyes. Every single every, time. Every yeah. time, bro. Every so, time. Here is Jesse Ventura. Oh, my sitting- fucking God. <laughs> 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 he's sitting in a room. And he's, he's U.S. Navy SEALs yellow t-shirt and a hat and the messiest hair you could imagine. Jesse, <laughs> dude, Jesse the Body Ventura has 500 confirmed kills in the U.S. Navy SEALs. I'm a Navy SEAL. And McMahon, you're next. <laughs> Mr. McMahon, I want to say to you first, Mr. is only a term I use for very few people. Fuck you, the people Vince. I use, the people I use are war officers. I served under in the U.S. underwater demolition <laughs> team. <laughs> I was ready to fucking wring some necks. I haven't watched this shit. The Jesse the, the Body US Ventura demolition seal U.S. Team. Navy SEAL propaganda with Vince so McMahon. McMahon. You haven't earned that title with me yet. We were for you as McMahon like I used to back in 1990. <laughs> what kind of tribute is this to what you've done? Remarkable. But then again, dictators always do some <laughs> remarkable things. <laughs> The WWE isn't exactly a democracy that we see in the United States. You are a dictator, but a benevolent one either. <laughs> All dictators will and do fall. I've met with dictator. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
fuck. <laughs> I've met with the dictator <laughs> of the world. <laughs> and I don't see no beard on you, big man. You know the dictator. <laughs> 500 confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> dude, dude, I was in the ocean. <laughs> Scuba Jesse. <laughs> dude, would you ever kill me? The man, the dictator, and dictator <laughs> of the world. <laughs> Met him. <laughs> What? Sam? Oh. Why you fight? Brush your fucking hair. Every time I thought it was over, this motherfucker would go and. Oh. Like, and I don't see no beard on oh you, McMahon. <laughs> Dude, and it gets fucking worse. <laughs> so after that, backstage this segment. Is, this is 15 <sighs> minutes in. We are three hours. So after this, backstage segment. I was like, oh, thank God we're going to get something else. Jonathan Coachman? Oh. It's Jonathan Coachman ESPN style. Yes, no, 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 office. no. <laughs> outside of Vince McMahon's office. This is just regular person Jonathan Coachman, not fucking yeah, lunatic not guy. No, no, no. He's not like, he, no, this ain't hard. He, no way. This is, he's just a guy. Holy fuck, man. Well, Jonathan so, Coachman announces that. <laughs> Raw's done and we're getting out of here tonight early. Don't worry about this show. <laughs> you guys don't get, worry about this. Hit shit. the fucking parking lot. You guys get the fuck out of here. I know you guys are ready to get home. He says, uh, two weeks it'll be a night of champions. Every title will be on the line at Vengeance from all the brands. Mr. McMahon has decided the main event Vengeance will be a WWE championship challenge. Any former or current world champion on the Raw roster tonight will be eligible to compete for the title. I don't remember that at all. Probably because it sucked. <laughs> you wait for me to say I remember it because I'll tell you right now. No, it only, it only <laughs> last the, the the former challenge thing only lasts till the end of this night where they announce what the match is. Because does it happen? Yeah, they do the five the six pack challenge thing or whatever the five pack with all the guys they announce in this. Yeah, I don't they call give it, it away the six yet. pack of ass challenge, and <laughs> everybody loses, including the no. Fans. That's what that's well, what the you match didn't is. Serve in the seals. Well, let me tell you, I met the dictator. <laughs> <laughs> of the <world>. And <laughs> you're not a benevolent, benevolent one either. Holy! All, all dicks and all taters will fall. <laughs> Dude, shitty, fucking shitty, shitty, shitty match. Yeah, and then so Jesse. The <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, <laughs> Mister. So All honestly, right. this uh, this championship challenge thing actually interesting. Where's con my comb? <laughs> what? <laughs> what championship Sorry. challenge thing, interesting concept. You know, you could run it up till the pay per view, like a uh, former champion saying, "Oh yeah, I want to be in the match." You know, like uh, build it to the yeah, pay yeah. No, they just fucking announce it all the night. They just give it away immediately. all the night. Yeah, so it's like if you're a former. WWE champion or whatever, I guess you could be in this match. But you could you could just say I want to be in this match and then you're in. Well, yeah, someone does, and actually. no one does it except <laughs> one guy. <laughs> and then the rest of them just get in the match, and then the match happens, yeah. and that's the match. Yeah, we'll get, yeah, I don't we'll get there though. Yeah, missed opportunity here. Well, Carlito and CM Punk are walking uh, through the hallway for their match up next. I'm like, oh, cool, that's fucking sweet. Carlito is probably still, you know, trying. CM Punk is definitely trying at this time. He's scratching and clawing to keep his fucking job. Yeah, so Carlito, I'm sure was, you know, give, Carlito was hot back then. Some effort he here. was uh, spitting apples. Nah, like, Ric Flair said. <laughs> Ric Flair said, "You're done." Was it after the Ric Flair shit? <laughs> he was hot. He was spitting apples. <laughs> no, he, he was spitting apples. IC champion, wasn't he around this time or not? Was he? Uh, like, Ric Flair said, "No way, pal." Yeah, you're yeah, right. this might be after Ric, it's Flair's after Ric Flair. Shit in oh his shit! Mouth. Okay, you maybe you're right. Yeah, it might be. Yeah, dude, this so. is a uh, this is a certified NL classic. Oh my god, how'd you know that? What the hell? <laughs> I'm a fan. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, I had uh, definitely had PTSD seeing them coming walking through. The, yeah, uh, man, that's rough. Dude, that was SVR8 as well. Yeah, that game is trash. Carlito CM Punk backstage parking lot brawl an hour <laughs> in SVR 08 that I was committed to and wouldn't stop watching. Damn. <laughs> Fucked up situation there. Yeah, thank you, James. That's true. 
The WWE Slam of the Week brought to you by Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Ah, get that. Dude. The, Cucumber. The Gatorade Thirst Quencher <laughs> tagline is Gatorade. Is it in you? Is it? Now, what do you mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> Cucumber Gatorade. I know that was a thing. Cucumber Gatorade. I it is. Yeah, that. yeah. It's a, I don't like it. I've All never right, had well, it. Well, Caden Murdoch like beat the Hardy Boys. Well, Jeff Hardy misses Swanton, and then they lost the tag titles because Murdoch pushed Jeff's foot off the rope after he got pinned, and then Murdoch and Cade jumped the Hardys after the match. Hunter Rayner's favorite wrestler is Lance Cade, and he's an idiot. <laughs> that is, uh, yeah, we give him shit you know, for liking this air all the time. <laughs> Lance Cade went to, like... Well, he grew up in this. I mean, Lance Cade went to one of the high schools that I grew up in, like, around the area. Yeah? Yeah, he, like, graduated with, like, my graduating class, but, like, I wasn't at the school with him or something. So you could have been one half of Caden Murdoch. <laughs> you could have been, been Murdoch. Caden Mur Douglas. <laughs> you could have been Tony Murdoch. Whoa, that, no, Hunter <laughs> Rainer's a smart Hunter Rainer's a smart kid, which is why it upsets me that he likes this era. <laughs> yeah, you could have like you know the other stars like Balls Mahoney or Snitsky or <laughs> well, Santino. don't worry about that. We're getting there. Um, so next up, we got CM Punk versus Carlito. CM Punk representing ECW, of course, and Carlito representing Raw. And WWE presents Vengeance Night of Champions, brought to you by WWE Raw Attitude, the drink sponsored by Sako Energy. No, brought to you by real? Sako Energy. It was a it was a drink that had Sako Energy in it. Okay, is this real? Yeah, it was yeah, Raw real. Attitude you get at Walmart? Did you ever see it at Walmart when you went? There, there? was a Hulk Hogan one. Uh, the can had uh, like the is like the like Hulk most... Hogan flavor. Here's the Raw Attitude one. Hulk Hogan flavor. <laughs> Dude, that fucking um, uh, design is like the most question. dated star wipe whatever design of all time. Like, that can it's, is so yeah. of the era. Here's the Hogan one. I do see the Hogan one. Wow. Yeah. Hogan flavor. <laughs> Tastes like dude. Pasta. It is Hogan flavor. <laughs> of course, dude. <laughs> Listen, brother. Even in 2007, I'm not buying the Hulk Hogan drink. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking disrespect the Hogan I only drink, buy one Hogan drink and it's not Hulk <laughs> brother <laughs> well that uh, is sponsoring Vengeance Night of Champions and uh, Carlito comes out here in the eat spit tights cause you know that was his thing you, you spit in your face um, and he looked like an ass spelunker here <laughs> oh yeah sure yeah Ric Flair said you're gonna die oh you're gonna uh, die and this again, this is just this is just all the classics here. I mean, there's nothing. Punk like gets hit with a he, Punk jumps off the second and gets hit with a drop kick out of the air, which is cool. He does the air Punk hits the air Pillman. Uh, there was a cool spot where Punk goes for the corner, uh, the bulldog out of the corner knee. Carlito throws him into the corner and then hits the backstabber on Punk, uh, which jo Joey Styles says that Carlito did that to Tori Wilson last week. Is that right? Carlito hit Tori Wilson yeah, he, with the he lung blower. On her. He turned on her. <laughs> He did the lung blower to her? <laughs> yeah, he did. Whatever he says here, I'm oh, going to have wow. to believe it. All right, fair enough. <laughs> well, Punk wins with the go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, he's putting me to sleep. Uh, ECW <laughs> gets the draft pick. ECW wins the draft pick, and of course, coming to ECW is... The Boogeyman. Oh, Holy shit. Holy shit, can we go <laughs> more bottom of the barrel than we... <laughs> Seriously, like you could call him then boogie. Like there, you're gonna get nobody well, the, out of this, right? Well, the boogeyman comes out. He does the whole fucking shit. Punk has to stand in the ring and nod and pretend to be happy that e boogeyman is coming oh, yeah, to his he's, show. He's a, he's, a, he's a player. He'll be good on the brand. CM Punk just had to work this whole match to beat Carlito to get to be co-workers with the boogeyman. <laughs> and boogeyman's out here with just a whole load dribbling out of his mouth. <laughs> That's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Just gnarly, just fucking chugging a whole bunch of worms, dancing, load in his mouth. Like, this guy is a fucked up kind of guy, man. And that's the kind of guy I like. So, welcome to what ECW. Is, speaking of that, what, uh, what is Boogeyman's greatest ECW moment besides, like, being backstage and scaring people? I don't think he did. Probably getting released. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's looking like it. Probably getting let go from ECW. Yeah. The run was uh, interesting. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so Snoop Dogg is here and he says, uh, hey, Mr. McMahon. I guess he thinks he's like listening to it or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, this is, of course, this is for Mr. McMahon Appreciation Night. Another How could we forget? Star. No chance. There's another star Steve. here. The Snoop Dogg, of course. And what's he say? He says, hey, Mr. McMahon, I'm rocking the uh, WrestleMania WrestleMania. Hat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Snoop Dogg says, thank you, Mr. McMahon, for making a lot of money. 
uh, and for making John Cena and his main man Steve. And yeah, for making, for making John Cena who will be whooping your ass and my main man Stone Cold Steve. <laughs> and, and then he said, hey, you know, he opened that can of whoop ass on your ass. And then he pauses and he says, hey, you remember when you had your head up Big Show's ass? <laughs> and then they showed it. They just, sh- they just show it. He said, Mr. Man, you are the greatest asshole in the world, if you don't mind me saying. Keep it raw. You guys, you guys, right. you guys missed the best part. Snoop Dogg says oh. he wants to thank Mr. McMahon for monopolizing wrestling. <laughs> yeah, you're making all that. <laughs> he says monopolizing wrestling. I want to thank you for monopolizing wrestling. That's awesome. <laughs> That's fantastic. Holy <laughs> shit, man. <laughs> for shizzle. That is insane. Uh, so, uh, yeah, here's some more Vince McMahon propaganda. Well, before that, JR and Lawler are talking about the draft so far, and Lawler says the seven foot four giant Kali is going to smack down. <laughs> yeah, hold on now. Jesus Christ, man. Yeah, hold on now, man. <laughs> Yeah, first of all, get your own shit. Second of all, his name couldn't be any more clear. What the fuck is wrong with you? Uh, and yes, of course, more Mr. McMahon video packaging. This is of him. This is just a whole video package of Vince being a, being a dick. Uh, they show him kicking Zach Allen's leg out of his leg, which we just watched. That was incredible was, when I saw it. We did just watch it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, legit. Just watch it. Uh, him making out with Trish Stratus and then being naked ass chiseling. Ass <laughs> chiseling? Wilson. Matrix juices? <laughs> Uh, he told Linda he wanted a divorce. He fired people. He fired the entire audience. He made people kiss his ass. He beat up Hogan and Flair and Bobby Lashley with weapons. He eliminated Austin from the Rumble. These are all equivalent, by the way. The Montreal <laughs> screw job. <laughs> <laughs> All these are just as bad as the others. So, yeah, uh, all the lovely things that Vince McMahon did. Well, thank you, Vince. Uh, well, next up, we got the Mick Foley Town Hall. Dude. I, we must just keep getting like real unlucky because like every Foley promo that we reviewed as of late is dog shit. He had it, <laughs> it, it, it's all the comedy Mick Foley is the like once he's this is bad. Yeah. Yeah. He just he says, you know, he's you know, he, talk, he shits on coach. He's at first he says, listen, uh, you know, usually coach doesn't interest me. But then I heard him mention an open challenge for the WWE championship and it occurred to me I'm a former champion. And since Mr. McMahon hired me last spring, I guess I'm a part of the Raw roster. Uh, and provided I survived the draft, I would like to officially announce that I'll be a part of the Open WWE Championship match. Anyway, let's talk about Vince McMahon. <laughs> uh, Vince has affected the lives of everyone here. He has so much power. Uh, and the question is, has he followed through, uh, you know, doing all the good things for the world? And Foley says, oh, well, somewhat. What, bitch? <laughs> he says he's given generously to charity. He's a super patriot, and he has money and power, but he is also arrogant and misogynistic and an egomaniac who enjoys humiliating people, and he has no friends, uh, and he, you know, uh, we have a list of people here that were asked to participate in the appreciation night that includes Hulk Hogan, Triple H, Eric Bischoff, The Rock, NBC Sports Chairman Dick Ebersol, Shawn Michaels, my unofficial fifth child Trish Stratus, and Ted Turner. And every one of them declined, uh, and they did not appreciate Vince McMahon. And should any of you? And now everyone says no, and he says, hey, Vince, have a nice day. And I wanted to kill myself. <laughs> 34 minutes. <clears throat> 34 Is that right? Is that minutes, what we're at here? 34 minutes, 19 seconds. <laughs> you wrote it down. Is how That's long how it took me <laughs> before pausing this episode and walking away because I had enough of this shit. I said, there's no way that Mick Foley can let us down here. And alas, here we are. He, like, didn't do anything here. Yeah. I thought he was going to, you know, at least something funny. Ha ha. It was the most nothing thing ever, yeah. Vince wore his underwear with the hole in the front. Like, you know, he was something crazy. Nope. But no, he didn't even do any of that. Yep, so uh, next up we got Balls Mahoney versus Umaga. <laughs> By the way, here was, here was your opportunity to do this for more people joining the championship match, but they do not. No, they do not do that. Well, Balls Mahoney is representing ECW. Umaga is representing Raw. And they immediately, right away, Taz says, how did Balls Mahoney get picked to represent ECW? <laughs> Dude, Which I is- wrote down, did they really put Balls on Raw? And then Taz <laughs> says, can someone explain to me how Balls is on Raw? <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Well, Umaga immediately super kicks Balls Mahoney in the fucking head. Balls does the Devon cell. Umaga hits him with the Samoan spike and wins. 
Going to Raw, King Booker. Okay, so... <laughs> I mean, King Booker going to Raw was a big draft at the time, I guess, sure. right? Sure. Yeah. I mean, he did nothing on Raw, but yeah. No, but that Taz sounds like a big name at the, you know, King Booker. It should have yeah. been good for it, yeah. sure. Taz is excited for King Booker to go to Raw. <laughs> Taz is the ECW Yeah, commentator. yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, King Booker with the Pinky Pyro. Um, I'm Quite using him out. on uh, SmackDown vs. Raw 2008. He only has oh. the Pinky Pyro on pay-per-views in-game, and there's no Charmel. Wait, really? He only uses the Pinkie Pyro on pay-per-view? Mm-hmm. Wow. I didn't realize they had the technology to make pay-per-view specific entrances. Yeah, so he'll come out and do the Pinkie Pose on uh, Raw or SmackDown or ECW, but when it's a pay-per-view, the Pyro goes off. Oh, wait, what? That sucks? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's only on the pay-per-view. Oh, yeah. I thought he did like a whole different entrance or something. No, oh, same entrance, the, just what? no Pyro until the pay-per-view. Wow, that's weird. That sounds like a glitch. <laughs> that doesn't sound that's like a 360, glitch. so I don't know. <laughs> Uh, but next up, we have Steve-O. Yeah, Steve. from that jackass. And I guess Steve-O <laughs> wasn't really given the, the 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 Iggy here about, you know, what this was meant to be and for cool. Mr. Grand Appreciation Night. Yeah, he said, well, Vince, I want to thank you. Uh, you know, I would love watching people get beat up. Uh, and, you know, I got a, I got a poem here for you. Uh, don't make me... Don't make me make you kick Don't my Don't talk ass. to me, I'll murder you. <laughs> <laughs> my lips write checks that my butt can't cash, and that means I'm ready for you, Vince. Uh, I'm kidding. Thanks for the entertainment. You're the man, yeah. Holy fuck. All right. Holy fuck, dude. Raw is I want it. Dude, I want it to. What, all, think of every, like, horrible jackass thing. Like, I wanted all of them to happen to me in this fucking <laughs> second here. I was I was watching this, and for some reason, I just had the urge to stick a little toy car up my ass, and it would be yeah. way more fun than this. We're rocking. I like that. <laughs> so now we have Bobby Lashley versus Chris Benoit. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. so obviously yeah. we're close but Bobby Lashley is the ECW champion and he yes. also has the same pyro as Lesnar when he jumps on the apron yes he does oh, just com complete complete rip off <laughs> yeah, just, just let me get that entirely, yeah, I'll take, that. <laughs> I'll take that shit yeah give me that um, shit um JBL calls Bobby Lashley one of the greatest rising stars as he sits there with the ECW World Championship. He's the future of this business, brother. The future rising star. And they, they really make sure to kill him later. <laughs> they really make sure that, you know he's just a bitch. Yeah, he doesn't get the bitch treatment later. You're yeah, right. Yeah, really. Big time, man. Well, Chris uh, Benoit and Bobby Lashley have a pretty fun match here. They do... Uh, perfectly fine TV match here. Way better than the opener. Why the fuck they, wasn't the rest of those matches just like this? I Because, well, probably because Chris Benoit wasn't going to come out and have a shitter. Yeah, that's true. He probably you was know, told to was, do a shitter, and he said, no, nah, I'm okay. I'm going to whoop Bobby Lashley. <laughs> <Yeah, that's laughs> Somebody's going to at least bleed a little bit in this one. 100%. I mean, JBL says, listen, I don't appreciate Steve-O coming on here, and he's a jackass. That's the show. Uh, but he showed appreciation of Mr. McMahon. I don't know what's the problem it's with the Snoop show. Dizzle, Mick Foley, and all all them talking shit. <laughs> yeah, the show, of course. Uh, so they start out with some grappling. Uh, Bobby would spinebuster Benoit a few times, but Benoit would always hold on. Um, yeah. Benoit is just constantly going for the cross face here. Uh, of course, beating the ECW champion would be big for Benoit at this point. And it's kind of where he was leading to anyway. Spoilers. Benoit goes to ECW at the end here. Uh, and he was he's meant to have an ECW title match with CM Punk very soon. Uh, so Benoit gets a cross face. Lashley gets the rope. Uh, Lashley goes for, I guess, the jackhammer, right? Or what was he doing? The suplex? Uh, Dominator? No, nah, it was the suplex thing. Dominator was the uh, other one. I don't sure. know. He did some uh, suplex yeah. thing at the time. Um, sure. But Benoit counters it going for a sharpshooter. Uh, Lashley reverses, goes for a gut wrench, awesome bomb. Uh, Dude, that yeah, was what awesome. The fuck? Yeah, I don't know. Like <laughs> he kept going. Cool. I was like, Whoa, yeah. what is this? That was a dominator, yeah, yeah. right? Or not? Um, he got him into awesome bomb. You know, it could have been going for the dominator. Yeah, you're yeah, probably right. right. It was very cool. Would have been way it. cooler. But, it was awesome. But he bomb. never hits it. He never hits it. He gets out of it. He doesn't. No, he does the opposite. Uh, Benoit reverses into a triple German suplex. Uh, very cool. Benoit gets the sharpshooter, but Lashley uses his leg power to throw him off. I think he did that a couple times too, which they were oh, look how strong. Look Bobby at how Lashley strong is. he is. Yeah, it was a good little yeah, story yeah. here for TV. Sure. Uh, Lashley ends up getting Benoit with the Dominator and wins. He, so even strange enough, James tilt to world power. Tilt to world. I thought he was going to tilt to world into the Dominator. 
It's actually just Del Toro power slam and he beats Benoit. Oh, wasn't the Dominator? That... No, it was just a power <laughs> slam. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Which is sure. I mean, because you, I completely understand why you would think it. Yeah, it sure. should have been. That's yeah. a fucking move. But no, yeah, power slam. Uh, which I was confused by. I feel like maybe that wasn't meant to be. Maybe he lastly caught him and he's like, ah, oh, fuck it. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking true. Go. Take it home, dude. Fuck. Uh, well, ECW wins, and ECW's draft pick is Chris Benoit, and. Uh, they kind of give each other a nod there in the ring, Benoit and Lashley, and JBL says, come on, man, that's three people we've lost. And Michael Cole says, that stinks! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> J- J- <laughs> JBL says, we lost King Booker, Boogeyman, and Chris Benoit. Two Hall of Famers and our freak. Yeah, B- Boogeyman and Booker T, those Hall of Famers. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... No, no. D. Trump <laughs> no. has some things to no. say here tonight. Miss Rickman Appreciation Night. Donald Trump is here to say some words here, and uh, Trump says it's pathetic that you'd give yourself an appreciation night. He goes crazy on Vince here. He says, "Who the hell are you?" <laughs> Bobby Lashley took down Umaga, and Lashley represented me. You had a choice. You took Umaga. Look what happened to you. It was pretty pathetic. I've never seen anything like it. Appreciation night. I think I'm going to give myself an appreciation night in my own company. The fan. This is a crazy ending line. The fans don't like what you're doing. They're not happy. Good luck, Vince. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Thank you. That's insane. Jeez. Yeah, really. That is fucking. He said crazy. what I was it's thinking. Insane. The fans. We don't like you, Vince, and we don't like what you're doing. Exactly. Well, all those kids in the front row were thoroughly enjoying this show, or not? Yeah, or not. They, oh, they could, maybe they or maybe, yeah. maybe they did. Maybe they stopped watching they at this didn't. point. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so it's now time for the Ashley Satellite Dude. Town Hall. Dude, this is. Oh. It, I I <laughs> I'm not joking. I'm not joking that I forgot that this happened. Because it's been a long ride up to this point. <laughs> it's been a stellar ride. Yeah, it's been a long and time. This, I don't even know if our words will be able to really put into context how fucking weird this was and how awkward this is. They welcome by a satellite <laughs> Ashley. Ashley is here via satellite because, well, she got suspended, which means she can't show up to the building, but she can be broadcast from satellite. So they send a camera crew to your house so she can be there and they can film it. (laughs) Yeah, she's still allowed on the program, of course. Uh, And she says, listen, I, uh, you know, I'm sorry. I, you know, it's, I know it's Miss McMahon Appreciation Night. I, I, you know, I, I regret spilling that coffee on him. It was an accident and I'm suspended over it. Well, Mr. McMahon has had a very unique relationship with the divas over the years. Including the time he threatened to fire Trish Stratus unless she barked like a dog. And then they just show it. They just show her doing that. Barking like a dog. Uh, and then it comes back and she says, Now I know Vince would love nothing more for one of the divas to do that again. And you know what, Vince? It is your night. But instead of having one diva come out to do that in her lingerie, what about two? And I immediately fucking knew. I knew immediately what this fucking was going to be. And the ding, 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 here goes fucking Mae Young and fucking fabulous fucking Moolah here. Because JR says, my God, say it ain't so. <laughs> what? Uh, uh, James, can you describe the scene? Can you tell me before you here? do that? Can you explain what Ashley was trying to uh, set up here? Because I don't understand what her, what's her, what's her revenge here? How is the revenge on, uh, she's embarrassing uh, Moolah and Mae Young, but I don't know if she's embarrassing well, Vince. Of course, Vince uh, is uh, watching. He's not. And though. He doesn't. He wouldn't. He wouldn't want to. Well, he he wouldn't want to see this. I think. All right. So here's. I now I I do remember what happened, and I will explain it. But I will tell you what I wrote down. Okay. So I wrote down. Mister Man always had an interesting relationship with the Divas over the years. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ashley <laughs> brings out Mae Young and fabulous Moolah. Who? Correct. And then I wrote, I'm done typing. I don't know what I'm watching. <laughs> so <laughs> they bring out. But I know that surely the visual. Yes, of I mean, course, there's a I lot. I fucking remember. So Fabulous Moolah and Mae Young are here, of course. Uh, and they are here. Old. Very old and in their lingerie. So old. And there is old, now apparently a stinky. dog pin set up on the stage. With yeah, the house and fake grass, a bowl uh, and fake, fake grass, grass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fire hydrant. Yes, and all dog of course, things. You know. Yes, for the of course that's what you you know dogs bark and they also live in dog houses, uh, 
And have bolts. And of course, they of course. get down on all fours and they look they at... They disrobe, of course. You, know. you got to get a little more naked for this. And then, uh, sure. you know, they get down on all fours and they look at this <laughs> empty bowl. So, at first, before they do this, <laughs> they get down... They get down on all fours, and I wrote, "Are they gonna shit and piss here?" <laughs> I was, because I listen. Nothing shocks me at this point. I swore they were just gonna have May and Mula just piss all over the fucking floor here, and their fucking lingerie and their old. They are old. <laughs> they are so old. So, as James said, they well, they get down here, James, on all fours, lingerie, old. They stinky. get down on all fours. <laughs> And and they look at this bowl, and then of course the two <laughs> older ladies on old as hell. on all fours naked naked start <laughs> barking at <laughs> the bowl, you and know, then, and the bone, and of then course. they go to grab the bone. These old, <laughs> <laughs> so old and very. <laughs> Very lot less clothing. Oh, nude almost. Fucking smelly. Milk toast. <laughs> old ladies <laughs> in the. They're barking <laughs> like the dog. They are barking directly down at the dog bowl and the See, dog bone, which are mic'd, of I course. And that was did, their cue. I just realized they were. They were barking because they didn't have dog food. Because there's and no they, food they in the bowl. They wanted food. So this, okay. The story, I didn't realize the that. The story is there that that's why they're barking because they need food as a dog would. Oh. And they want the food. And it, it goes on. Like, it's legit. Them just... They're, they're just staring at this bowl, barking for so long. JR is on commentary saying, Why? <laughs> Just I'm at home saying, why? <laughs> Dude, at this point, my wife walks in. And she's like, what the fuck are you watching? <laughs> and I go, Vince McMahon Appreciation Night. She goes, that she man said, okay, is incredible. Okay, she that goes, makes sense. This yeah. man is something else. That segment with the dog barking might be the worst Raw segment ever in the history of wrestling. It's It's got to be up there, Tony. Ashley, who was suspended, is here on satellite. To announce her new segment, dude. Of- not not even that, but then remember when you made Trish bark like a dog and strip in her underwear and you humiliated her. Well, let's do it again. I'm gonna humiliate two old ass women. Old. <laughs> <laughs> Like, Tony, I really didn't. I was so stunned by the segment. I didn't even think of like the reasoning for it. This did not do anything for what Vince is- McMahon or to him. Like, she embarrassed two old-ass ladies for no fucking like reason. Like, if she wanted and- to embarrass Vince or whatever, she would have had them, like, hump him in real life or something. You know, like... Some- Pissing shit on his face. Or, like, you know, like, make out with him or something stupid backstage. Sure. No, but this like- was- Blow up his limo. This was <laughs> Maybe it was that the whole time. <laughs> Yeah, that's actually. This was just a distraction. <laughs> actually, put dynamite on the limo. Bombed <laughs> his limo. <laughs> it was yeah, just to keep him distracted. He's putting acne so dynamite on his limo. limo. <laughs> yeah, that's. You know what? I think we're onto something here. That's probably what it was going to end up being. Holy shit, though! This is top. <laughs> probably number one worst wrestling moment of all time. Literally, this yeah. appeals to nobody. Like that's the problem. This, this is appeals to zero. Segment. It, it appeals it, to it not appeals one to person. One, to one. Yeah, to it one. Yeah, you're right. Man. That weird little man. Well, don't worry because we have Santino versus MVP up next. No, we got. Uh, oh, do we? Is that next? Oh, well, that, um, they're walking through the hallway. They're prepared for it. Holy of shit! It's coming no. up here, but truly, what's from, up next? We go from <laughs> terrible to worse. I don't know what's going on here. Well, okay, so they show Santino and MVP walking through the hallway, and then they show a graphic for Iron Sheik and Superfly <laughs> Jimmy Snook, and I said, holy fuck, are they wrestling on this show? That's awesome. I thought it was, who- I thought it was Iron Sheik versus Jimmy Snook, yeah. Yeah, me too. I thought, I was like, who, what brands are these representing? This is awesome. I can't wait to see this. Sadly, it was not. It was, of course, Mr. McMahon Appreciation Night, and it was Snook and Sheik together. Why? Why is it them two together? Are they like were they known to be like um, they did anything? they did some stuff with them together? Uh, remember they did like the we <laughs> we, talk, we talked about it you before. Hear that? With, uh, Sorry. 
<laughs> Remember the Taboo Tuesday stuff where they were in the poll or whatever, and then they got sure, voted. Yeah, so yeah, they okay. were doing stuff they like put the old ass dudes together. Yeah, they yeah. were just hanging out around. Like Roddy Piper was around then too with yeah. them or whatever. Yeah. Sure. Well, Jimmy Snuka says, Vince McMahon, there's only one thing the Superfly want to say to you, brother. I appreciate all those years with you and your fada. Uh, when I watch that TV, I know something isn't right, brother. That cuckoo bird is, you know. I want to know why you're different, brother. I don't understand. And the Irish Sheik said, fuck you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame the Kennedy McMahon cuckoo or crazy because I watched the match between Mr. Donald Trump and the richest man and they attacked Mr. McMahon from behind and they double cross him, cut his hair. That is why he go cuckoo. Kennedy McMahon, you play rocket ball with me. You're still <laughs> great athlete. <laughs> I can't believe you understood this. I could not hear a word you were saying. I had her captions on. I, was, okay. I had no clue. I, had, I, wrote, I have no idea one word. He, all I heard was cuckoo. That's it. Kennedy McMahon, you play rock and ball with me. <laughs> Iron Sheik is like fucking chained out crazy. Got Dragon Zord power coin type shit going on. Dude, this on. is an unbelievable gut on this guy. I've never seen such a thing. It looks like they inflated him before the segment. <laughs> 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 Holy smoly, man. Crazy shit here, man. Yeah. All right. So now well, it's let's time. Let's keep going. Keep going, baby. Why are you not fired up for this? We're only. This is my fired up voice. For this. <laughs> so now it's time. Yeah. MVP versus Santino. Yeah. See, more title versus title here, Tony. You like that shit, right? Yeah. It's a good. I bet they'll have a real strong finish, too. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Santino's representing Raw and MVP's representing SmackDown. He's the U.S. champion. Santino has the IC title that he won recently after he was pulled from the crowd and he beat Umaga with it the help of Bobby this Lashley. This was fresh off of that? No way. Yeah, very. I'm, I don't know if it was like, it was oh, pretty yeah, soon. Because he was very this. not comedy here. You know, Santino was very. Uh, no, yeah. he's just, hey, I'm Santino. Look at me. He's not like Cobra dude. He's just a dude, anything. yeah. Yeah, 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 he's guys in the crowd. Yeah. He's got a tracksuit on. Yeah, he's fucking whatever. Uh, MVP and Santino do a kick exchange in this match. And then MVP snap mirror Santino and says, you want to kick? And then just does the dickhead indie kick to the <laughs> back awesome. of Santino. <laughs> well, MVP uh, gets the uh, interest. That looked cool. Hey, oh, the big uh, inflatable. I forgot John. about yeah, that they, big inflatable They thing. use the same thing to blow up the Iron Sheik. <laughs> <laughs> That's peace. <laughs> yeah, no, that was cool. They, they, yeah, they did a whole. They were kind of like investing in MVP for a while there. Yeah, they yeah, made absolutely. Seem like a big deal. Yeah, I don't, I don't know when they gave up on him. I only got hurt. Or something finish or this match. <laughs> well, yeah, I think he did get Santino, hurt. Right? Isn't that what happened? Something like that. I th he probably does. Yeah. Um, Santino hits a spinning back fist to MVP's chest. Uh, MVP hits the player's boot in the corner. Uh, and then hits him with the overdrive. Fuck you, man. And then... <laughs> <laughs> he, set up, he set up for it, and I just fucking yeah. I rolled my eyes. So I, my eyes fell out of my head. But I was justified here. He hits him with the overdrive, and JR says, Oh, we've seen that move many times on SmackDown. First of all, JR doesn't watch SmackDown, and I don't think he knows who MVP is. <laughs> <laughs> but he knows this move is patented. Of course. Well, MVP wins and SmackDown gets the draft picked of Tori Wilson. And Jerry Lawler says, oh, my. <laughs> he does say, oh, my. <laughs> That's crazy. And Tori Wilson comes out and MVP is very happy about this. And he's, he's licking his lips. So and is dude. Like, what are you doing, man? And they show a random shot of the white guy in the crowd standing up and applauding for Tori. No one else is paying attention. <laughs> what is going on here? Yeah, really. Okay, so uh, well, they show, uh, also sorry, they show JBL and Cole at commentary, and Cole says, hey, "You were complaining about losing three picks. Are you happy now?" And JBL says, "Yeah, I'm happy." And then for the rest of the show, JBL says, "Oh my god, I want to fuck Tori." Says <laughs> JBL oh to Horny Jail. Oh my god, immediately. please fuck me, Tori. <laughs> Fuck Dude, me, Tori. they were got talking it. about Tori Wilson oh, like man. that was the greatest draft pick that's ever happened in the history of wrestling. This is the greatest thing ever. JBL is so horny, man. Yeah, that's true. Dude, the oh Weird my line, dude, I lost it. Oh my. Oh my, yeah. <laughs> so uh, now it's time for Bret Hart. 
<laughs> this is this is a crazy one. Uh, the, the first thing I another, before Bret Hart came on, I was hoping you'd say, "Hey Vince, you got one of these." <laughs> he he kind of does. <laughs> he kind of does that. Uh, so it's Mr. Man appreciate that. Bret Hart in a gym. Is it his gym? Is he just in a random gym? He what like is he going was on? In the the Hitman's always gym. working out. Sure, that's true. He looked good. Brett says, uh, well, what do I think about Mr. McMahon's appreciation night? I can't find the words to express such deep gratitude for a guy like Vince McMahon. I'm sure I'm not the only one trying to find the right words. There's no real good way to express those words. There's only one thing better than that, and that's one of these <laughs> upside the jaw. <laughs> he raised his face and he said, the only thing better would be another one. If you got 30 or 40 fists. 30 or 40 fists. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. That's even that's even better. Be that's the best thing that could happen to Vince McMahon. Is what I'm going to do? Yeah, fist him. Forty fists in Vince's ass. <laughs> this is classic this is Brett the... pose, by the way. He's got that the uh, elbow elbow on the knee. Yeah, one foot yeah. up. <laughs> classic yeah, yeah. Brett. So that's the best thing that could happen to Vince McMahon, and that's all I got to say about that asshole. <laughs> Brett, of cool. course, best promo on the show. Not surprised. Very cool. He looked good here too. So he like, did. Oh, he looked, looked great. Good. Uh, yeah. Next up, we have Mike the Balls Mazanian, and he is facing <laughs> Snitsky. <laughs> the teeth guy. Uh, so, yeah. Snitsky uh, this is keeping like, a job because he is so ugly is crazy. Dude, and they, like, are, like, this is a crazy, crazy story about this guy. Because if this is your first time watching this... He's just a bald, ugly guy coming out, and Joey Styles is screaming, "What a fucking He's lunatic!" Not even this fucking ugly. Guy is. It says, "Yeah, <laughs> Joey Styles is what a lunatic Snitsky what is." What a crazy the guy is just ugly bald. bastard. The guy is He's bald. Bald, yellow teeth, bald. You like, don't even really uh, see his a- teeth. He's just fucking bald. Yeah, it's true. I, I think at the end they flash him a little bit. Yeah, but yeah, like again. you don't even see his teeth that much. No, it's not <laughs> like the he's fucker not is just bald. Yeah, hundred percent. You ugly, and this is, ugly uh, fucking dude, <laughs> lunatic, you bitch, crazy ugly fucker. <laughs> I wish you would die. Really? He's just bald. <laughs> well, oh, this is also the Miz before. Like, this is like he's just turning into the Miz. Like his nameplate still says Mike Mizanin. Okay. Uh, yeah. He's with he's with SmackDown here, by the way. Snitsky, of course, ECW, uh, and which is even stranger that Joey Styles is shitting all over him. Uh, uh, so Miz, uh, just gets killed. Miz gets killed here. Uh, Snitsky fucking hits him with a lariat, gets the win. Uh, so ECW gets a draft pick until Snitsky gets back into the ring, bald, and stomps out Miz, hits him with a running clothesline in the corner, one of them, just a one running clothesline in the corner, which was enough for the referee to realize that Snitsky was a bald, ugly lunatic and to <laughs> reverse the decision and give the Miz the win. It's bald, man. <laughs> and, and so Miz wins a pick for SmackDown. Joey Styles in commentary says, this is like, I feel like this was screamed to him in his, head, in his headset. Snitsky didn't consider the ramifications of his violent actions. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> well, SmackDown's draft pick is, oh, you guessed it. The b- picks are picking up here. Chris Masters. And Taz says, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Big time yeah, pick there. Yes, sir. <laughs> Damn, he, he could have gone to ECW. You know that? He could have gone to ECW. Oh, well, well Taz, Taz says, well, yeah, for some reason, Taz is putting over Chris Masters going to he put SmackDown. Really do too. I don't, yeah, yeah, why I don't does know. he keep Taz doing that? I don't know. know. <laughs> Taz says, wow, big coup for SmackDown there. And JBL immediately buries him. He says, well, uh, Chris Masters has a nickel brain but a million-dollar body. <laughs> All right. And I really would love to fuck Tori Wilson. <laughs> yeah, you guys remember, we got Tori Wilson. Please let me fuck Tori Wilson. God damn, dude. Uh, so now Bobby Heenan is here. This is, I mean, Bobby Heenan just tries his best here. He's uh, he kind of, uh, this is just at the, like, it doesn't get better. These are these promos do not get any better. No. In fact, the one after this is also fucking horrible. This is all fucking dog shit. They couldn't even make the segments where you're shitting on Vince McMahon good. Like, everybody, like, just... Uh, Stone Cold is the best one later. That's the only fucking really yeah, you're right. good one. You're right. But, like, Bo- uh, you know, Bobby Heenan here, he just kind of says that same thing everyone else did you know you fucking you know you cost a lot of people jobs and uh you're best at being a bitch and uh thank you for everything thank you so much roddy piper town hall roddy piper in a funeral outfit (laughs) (laughs) 
Roddy Piper comes out and he says, who better appreciate Vince McMahon than Rowdy Roddy Piper? I'm going to cut the shittiest from <laughs> ever here. <laughs> he, well, he, thankfully, he doesn't do too much. He just shows practically the same exact video they showed earlier. Uh, he just uh, It's a video to honor Vince McMahon's proudest moments and a video showing Vince loving cock and Big Dick Johnson dancing around him and his face and Big Show's ass, Shane eating his ass, shit being poured <laughs> on him. Uh, pissing his pants, Austin beer bath, Shane buys WCW, Austin giving him a stunner, uh, and then he gets his head shaved, and it plays the wah, 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 wah song. <laughs> and it zooms end. in, and there's like a little circle. It zooms in. Yeah, and... so, yeah, yeah, very uh, Looney Tunes style. <sighs> and then Roddy Piper says, on behalf of the WWE wrestling audience, we appreciate you, Vince McMahon, for what you really are. Congratulations, Vinny. Ah, ha, ha. Holy fuck, dude. Holy fuck. <laughs> this is brutal. This is so fucking bad. Yeah, man. This is going to be the worst Raw ever. Dude, it's fucking bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's uh, Mark Cuban um, with a goatee. Mark Cuban just puts him over. Mark Cuban Mark with a goatee. Cuban. Yeah. yeah, Mark. Go Mark to your right. Go to Cuban. Right. Fucked, up, Cuban. <laughs> fucked up, dude. Get on Shark Tank. What that- are you doing here, brother? He just says, "Hey, man, you uh, you are an entrepreneur, and you know that American dream, and th- you are. Thank you, Mister McMahon. Fuck you, got man. the dick all in your mouth. Yeah, man, just slobbing all those balls. Sure, boing boing. <laughs> <laughs> so, Candace Michelle versus Crystal, <laughs> dude. Did, dude. Did you? So, Crystal's dude. name is spelled K R I S T A L. That's right. Crazy." <laughs> <laughs> Crystal Marshall representing SmackDown, Candice Michelle representing Raw. Candice Michelle taunt spamming on the way down the ramp here. Uh, Jerry Lawler asks JR for some scoops on the draft, and JR says, I don't have any inside or outside dirt. <laughs> and then, I hear you. Candace, <laughs> I don't Candace care. Michelle don't know. Gets, don't care. Candice Michelle gets hit with a boot at one point, and JR says, Oh, Candice ate that boot, and there ain't no barbecue sauce I on it fucking either. fucking heard that shit. <laughs> He well, said a real idea. Uh, yeah, just trying to, you know, we're two hours in. He's just trying to do anything he can here. Uh, Candace Michelle wins with a spinning heel kick. Uh, and hey, man, going a spinning to Raw, fucking heel kick was awesome. That shit was fucking sick. I don't even know she meant to do it. Nah, but it was good. <laughs> <laughs> do it again. Well, Raw gets the draft pick here, and it's Bobby Lashley. Oh, this should be a son of a bitch. Bobby Lashley's going to Raw. And he comes out and he celebrates because, you know, he's happy to go to Raw, but he's still the ECW champion. And here comes Jonathan Coachman to the stage. Coach says, hey, congrats on being drafted, but I just came from Mr. McMahon's office. And uh, per Mr. McMahon's orders, now that you're a part of Raw, you can't be the ECW champion anymore. So uh, we're going to strip you of that title. So give me that title. Give me that title right now, please. Bobby Lashley gives him the title, but he also takes the mic. And I say, no, <laughs> no, Bobby, don't. You got something don't to say it. tonight. Don't do it, Lashley. And Bobby Lashley says, you stripped the title away from me. You stripped the title away from me. You stripped the title <laughs> You stripped the title away from me, but I'll tell you one thing. I'm still a champion. You'll see. Because on Raw, I'm going to prove it. <laughs> no, Bobby. Yeah, right. Bobby, shut the fuck up. Right. Shut the fuck up, Bobby Lashley. Are... God damn it. You are a bastard. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So now Vince can be ECW champion again, right? He could just take the title and he doesn't have to be depressed anymore. No, I'd rather kill myself. <laughs> kill myself. I got, I got real real excited here. I was like, Bobby Lashley got drafted and then Kojima came out. The world is watching me. The world <laughs> yeah. is watching me. I said, oh, watching shit. Me. All right. Yeah, hell yeah. And he said, hello, I am Coach, and I'm here to tell you that Mr. McMahon told me to Give strip me you belt. of the title. I said, God you, fucking damn about, it. Just go back to the theme title. song. Bad Brick and everybody. Yeah, yeah that seats. song is awesome. Yeah, I like it too. <laughs> um, uh, he's but, always had good songs. Homeboy. Yeah, that one's crazy. Homeboy awesome. is crazy as hell. <laughs> That's how it's spelt, too. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, now it's time for Jeff Hardy versus Elijah Burke versus Batista. Triple threat match. The way it should have been the whole time. Uh, yeah. Great. Pretty base Makes triple sense. threat here, too. I was excited for this one. I said, finally. Fun. I mean, it is a fun match and a fun finish, too. It's fine. This is, it should have been triple threats all fucking night. They probably could have had some more shit to do. Really? Yeah, yeah you're they probably right, actually. 
you know, we could have come up with a bunch of fucking fun stuff. They could have just, you know, rehashed whatever this match was six times over. It would have been fucking fine. Uh, Jeff Hardy's representing Raw, Elijah Burke's ECW, and Batista's SmackDown. Uh, this Jeff Hardy is uh, a cursed Jeff Hardy in my eyes because he just looks like a normal dude. Yeah, yeah he, he does. does. He looks a lot older. He, yeah, you're right. He, he looks like ready to go to TNA. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're right. <laughs> Uh, Cole says if Batista's drafted, he'll still have his do-or-die match at Vengeance against world champion Edge. Uh, so, I, you know, fuck the draft. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Batista goes to Batista bomb Jeff. Jeff fights out of it, and Ron is Batista. He hits the whisper in the window of Batista and then hits him with a swanton. Elijah Burke pulls Jeff out of the ring during the pin, uh, gets back in the ring, pins Batista for two. Uh, JBL says that Elijah Burke would be great on SmackDown, as would Jeff Hardy, and that he's praying that Michael Cole goes to OVW. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> Batista gets in the ring, kills Jeff with a spine buster, kills Elijah Burke with one, hits the fucking Batista bomb on Elijah Burke, and he, like, I don't know if Burke came down early or didn't get up. I don't know what happened, but it looked like Burke got fucking annihilated with this Batista <laughs> bomb. It was awesome. Double though. spine buster to Batista bomb was sweet. Uh, uh, you know, uh, definitely a uh, exclamation point win there. He said, "I win." <laughs> yeah, for yeah. real, I fucking win tonight. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Uh, and Batista does get the win. He pins Elijah Burke and gets SmackDown's draft pick, which is Ric Flair. Come on down here. And Batista's very happy about this. Hey, smile. I so I was like, I don't fucking remember Ric Flair being on SmackDown in 2007. I have no recollection of this. So I looked it up. Uh, Flair faces MVP at Vengeance for the U.S. title and loses. Then he feuds with the Great Khali as a partner of Batista. Then the Great Khali kills Ric Flair. He goes away for three months, and then he comes back to do the retirement angle. Wow. Huh. Yeah. Okay. So Which I is mean, on Raw. Yeah, we're getting there. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, but I was like, yeah, he just he doesn't, doesn't really do it. I guess they just brought him to... SmackDown to die to the Great Khali. That's yeah. all. Yeah. SmackDown, and then he said, "I'd rather be retired," and then did the retirement tour. I'd rather <laughs> get blown up in a limo. Yeah, for sure. That's crazy. <laughs> Captain Lou Albano is here in Florida, What's probably. What's going on here? What's that? What was? What the fuck happened here? He says Vince has got the brain of a dehydrated baby. <laughs> all right. He's no. He's not dealing with a full deck, and I, was, I say he's got it together. I'm Captain Lou, and I'm talking to you. I know McMahon. I've known him since he was a kid, and he, he's still a little kid. And I'm Captain Lou, and I'm talking to you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and often intimidated, never duplicated. And I'm Captain Lou, and I'm talking to you. And so fine. Ah, so good. I'm Captain Lou. Uh, well, I'm talking to you, of course. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Captain Lou, I'm just trying to finish this show up. I'm just trying to talk to you here. I'm Catalou. Catalou, trying to get out of here. So, Catalou, please pay me. I'm at home and I'm talking to you. So then WWE shows the craziest battle royale image of all time. <laughs> Got to be the nuttiest thing I've ever seen in my life. Dude, they show the battle royale graphic, and I like genuinely laughed out loud because I swear the last like I, there's been at least three retros in the past three months where I remember James saying another fucking battle royale i can't deal with the battle royales on these fucking shows anymore and they show this after this long ass dog shit show they show the shittiest battle royale lineup in the history of wrestling and i was dying laughing because i was like james that's, I, that's why when i messaged you on discord and said you don't know the main event do you no, he said no nah, is it all I good, good. <laughs> they should have flopped this with the john cena edge match they should have not did the show. Yeah. <laughs> they should have just gone home. So, they should have licked less balls. <laughs> <laughs> Where the fuck is Quee Wee? <laughs> so the image, by the way, for this battle royal shows the following people. This, all the stars are here. Team SmackDown, of course, which is William <laughs> Regal, okay. Chris Masters. Wait, Chavo Guerrero, the didn't cruiserweight Masters champion. Just, didn't jo Masters just Masters just joined like SmackDown? Yeah, he's, all right. Yeah, Team he's SmackDown on, he's already for represented. life. <laughs> he always has he's been already. as of tonight. Yes. <laughs> so uh, Chavo, the cruiserweight champion, Matt Hardy, and Mark Henry. Correct. Uh, Team ECW is the craziest image of Kevin Thorne that I think I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> 
<laughs> they just use it that one time. I feel like and that I'm is never insane. Gonna say, what the fuck? Uh, yeah, Matt crazy. Striker, Tommy Dreamer, Marcus Corvan, <laughs> and the Sandman. Another crazy image. <laughs> They weren't very photogenic, those ECW guys. Well, they were, you know, a new breed of violence unleashed. Team Raw is Eugene. This is the shittiest team in the history of pro wrestling. <laughs> Dude, this is y'all's favorite era. Eugene, Viscera, Kitty Dykstra, Who? John Morrison, and Johnny Nitro. Johnny Nitro I'm sorry. And yep. uh, Randy Orton. Yes. That is is uh like the world is watching me the world is watching me they couldn't even like that is how like battle royals have to be like the easiest match right Mm -hmm. they couldn't even like pump up the star power of the main event battle royal of the draft episode they had nobody to fucking do this match what the fuck so, uh, Mean Gene says, thank you. I don't know. I skipped this. <laughs> well, okay. So, there was... Did you not watch the Dusty Rhodes crazy promo Skip here? That. Okay. So, Dusty Rhodes Town Hall. Uh, shocked that you skipped this. Dude, Sorry. okay. So, Dusty Rhodes, like, does not say anything bad. Uh, like, this is like... This is so... I wrote down what he said, because I had... I was, like, watching, I was like... This is fucking weird. I have to, like, I need this to be heard. So Dusty Rhodes says, let's talk about Vince McMahon. One of his favorite sayings is perception is reality. Uh, you can all, by the way, you can, like, Cody talks exactly, like, same cadence as Dusty yeah, Rhodes. Yeah, it's yeah, crazy. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's crazy. 100% the same fucking cadence, yeah. He said, as we grew up together in this industry, I had a dream and he had a vision. His vision was to build the biggest empire in sports entertainment. No matter who he stepped on or push aside or how many families he put out of work, you'd be the judge of how he got here and how he, who he stepped on. Whether it was right or wrong, Vince McMahon's legacy is in this building. How many people that came out here and talked about him tonight have been able to say Vince McMahon fired me and then nine months later, they got the call and said, I'll be right back. You don't have to love him and you don't have to like him or agree with his psychology of this industry. I don't. But one thing we all have to do is respect him and then he just leaves <laughs> like huh. what the fuck i couldn't believe i was like what of all people the american fucking dream is not gonna drill this dude's fucking dick into the dirt what the fuck yeah, the american I could, I was, dream is mark cuban right brother i guess yeah <laughs> well, Man is the american dream really i was like oh my god dude he just blew him. you what reading that off was like it definitely gave me cody vibes like you're talking I was yeah, like, yeah same yeah you, i mean if you watch yeah, just yeah, i said what do you want to talk about <laughs> oh my god yeah really what do you want to talk about so like, what do you want to talk about i want to talk, I want to talk about respecting vince mcmahon as a human being i love this man please don't fire me oh, perception man. is reality he, he, he made this business of in this industry that we love yeah we love yeah, this industry. Pontificating. Uh, oh, yeah. As you said, Mean Gene uh, says, Ah, oh, Vince McMahon fucking fired me. And that was right. cool. He said, <laughs> I thought it was funny. Mean Gene said that Tuesday Night Titans was tanked, and then I became the host, and then this show got. Yeah, he said, you know, I thought it was re- I thought it was really nice that you stepped on his host and appointed me as the new host of Tuesday Night Titans, but then it wasn't long after that they canceled the show, and I feel like you knew about that <laughs> coming. <laughs> that was funny. That was like some insider bullshit. That's awesome. And he says, you gave me my biggest break. You pulled a Donald Trump on me. You you said, Gene, you're fired, and you sent me on my way after 10 years, but I got a pretty good job out of it. <laughs> that was, that was so awesome. I thought cool. that was pretty good. Well, here comes James' favorite part of the show. Dude. All right. So now it's time for the Raw versus SmackDown versus ECW Battle Royale. All the stars are here. So listen, this is not somehow, somehow, this is not a team match. No one is, this is every man for himself well, battle well, royale know, here. When you when you got so many egos Why? together, Johnny, Why? you got so many egos together, it's hard to get them on the same page. Why? <laughs> this doesn't make any it was fucking a team, sense. It was, it was a team match, actually. They built it. It up. was not. Yes, it was. They teamed it as a team. They specifically say everyone is on their own. They it's not a team match. But they were represent. The match starts with all the SmackDown guys beating up Mark Henry. <laughs> it doesn't make any fucking sense. What the fuck? Well, was spo- Why would they not all work together? If it doesn't matter, then don't do the match. It was so Why do the team, fucking match? But whoever aged the match did not age it properly. And you know me? I'm very thorough. I will write down all the shit. 
I skipped this whole match. Dude, <laughs> okay, so the other thing I wrote down is what the fuck is up with Visrish t-shirt? What the hell's going on here? He cut it yeah, titty style. No, but I thought okay. that... Uh, <laughs> I thought he was wearing a blue shirt under his brown shirt for some reason, and then his brown shirt was oh. ripped in half or some shit, and I could not figure out what was going on until I figured out he was wearing a Crazy. Scott Hall style t-shirt. Crazy fit. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. Dude, I thought he had custom raw pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> Which would have been so fucking that sick. That would have been awesome. Right. Oh, so. <laughs> oh my god. Not Ariel. Two draft picks. pussy in that, you think? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, like custom raw. raw pajamas. So, yeah, Battle yeah, Royale, awesome. two draft picks on the line. Every shitty wrestler oh, yeah, you can sorry, imagine. The final two. Final two draft picks. Sorry, yes. Anyways, this is not a team Battle Royale, like Johnny said. But as you can see here, Kenny died used to a big raw guy. Super raw. <laughs> so, big angle guy, apparently, because in so SVR 2008, Kenny Dykstra is fucking a main character in it. Really? Yeah, and some of the storylines he's like a main character. I was like, I was like, was Kenny Dykstra even on Raw when I was playing? I was like, I guess he had to have been. <laughs> and well, I was like, know. he must have been a big fucking part of Raw. And then, you of know, course, I said, I don't know who was watching this, but I, I hope you are Kenny Dykstra, you, guys. Do you think like they asked WWE, hey, like who's like gonna, you know, like who's your up next guys? And yeah, KD man. Those. Who else is it? Is MVP on there? Yeah, MVP, Mark Henry, Kenny Dykstra. Was uh, Kennedy, so they, oh, was wow. Kennedy Edge, in there too? Yeah, Kennedy, Matt Hardy. So they must have thought Kenny Dykstra was going to be some uh, shit. Oh, yeah. They, you know, he had that leg drop. No, they, they did drop. for sure. I remember right when uh, Spirit Squad, he was like uh, a big focus of the group after they ended. Like he was like a main guy. They pushed for like. Was it like a months or something? What happened there? Was it was that a John Cena thing? Does John Cena start dating Mickey James and the kids of Kenny? Like it's something like that, right? I remember. <laughs> was it? I, sw I swear that's what, what it was. What the hell? <laughs> I think that I think that's right, James. You remember hearing that, right? I'm not crazy. Yeah, no, I heard that for sure. Absolutely, I fucking heard that shit. According to the internet, Mickey was cheating on Kenny Dykstra with John Cena. Mm. But this is all speculation, of course. I would not know. And then Kenny Dykstra was no longer pushed. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Well, that's... Uh, well, he was raw, bro. Whatever. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so Mark Henry and Viscera eliminate people until they meet in the middle. Big fight feel. The two, I love that that's also the same spot that you Big picked up you. at because that's also where I skipped to. <laughs> <laughs> I legit wrote a bunch of people got eliminated. I don't care. Viscera and Mark Henry He's do a stare down. The beats, brother. <laughs> so uh, Mark Henry fucking potatoes Viscera in the head with a punch. Just Dude, fucking potatoes holy, the shit out of him. Holy fuck. Even JBL like, goes, what the fuck? <laughs> and if you get JBL to go, what the fuck on a potato? Yeah. You potato. Yeah. Him. God damn. Dude, yeah, they collide in the middle twice. Mark Henry, I don't know what he was trying to do, but he fucking knocks the snot out of Viscera. It's awesome. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, yeah, it's Mark Henry eliminates Viscera. Uh, Matt Hardy and Randy Orton are the last two. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Randy Orton yeah. eliminates Matt Dude, Hardy. Even at one point, Lawler is saying on commentary, I don't understand why Raw is dumping Raw guys. <laughs> <laughs> no one understands. Yeah, Mark true. Henry and Matt Hardy and Randy Orton are the last three left. Matt Hardy helps eliminate Mark Henry from SmackDown. <sighs> and then and then Randy Orton and Matt Hardy have a match. And then Orton eliminates Matt Hardy. All right. well, okay, so, also, I'm just thinking about yes. this. If you're doing a draft, you probably don't want more people on your brand anyway because they're just going to take your spots away from you. So why would you want more people on your brand anyway? None of it makes any fucking sense, Tony. You're right. <laughs> you're right. I don't know. That's, you're right. It makes why no would... fucking sense. You don't want people to join your brand unless you're trying to make like, yeah, a Yeah, I don't want people taking my spot. Unless you're, you're right. making a tag team, I guess. But other than that... Batista would be wanting Ric Flair, I guess. To beat the shit out of him, right? Or not? Yeah, the only time you would want somebody on your show, I guess, is if it's a heel for a heel and a face for a face. Other than that, you like... beat the hell out of somebody, maybe. I don't fucking maybe. want you on my show. Yeah, I don't know. All right, whatever. Uh, Go well, on. Well, Raw's second to last draft pick is... Snitsky. JR says, oh my god. <laughs> and I, I wrote, Snitsky comes out on stage and has yellow teeth. What a lunatic piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> and Raw's final pick. The end of the show. The epitome of the 2007 Raw 
duh, SmackDown ECW draft. The big, we've been waiting for this all night. Who is going to be the final pick? Of course, there's a supplemental draft. Whatever, don't worry about that. The final pick coming to Raw. Kennedy! <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Kennedy and Jess, oh my god, Raw has hit the jackpot! Is this when Mr. Kennedy just came back from injury? Had to be, because it's a huge it pop. It feels like it. Yeah, big pop, which also must mean he is just about to get fucking yeah, fired, I yeah. think, right? About time, about time. Right? Because is he, a, is it, or is it he gets fired away he after? He gets suspended. This? Uh, for well, no, because they definitely oh. do the NWO Lakers match or whatever. Is that here or is that <laughs> maybe that's Lakers later? Because NWO okay, Lakers. Okay, June 11, June 11. I, I'm not even phased by you saying that because that's okay, real. Okay, NWO 11. Lakers or the NWO Nuggets? <laughs> okay, so, uh, James, I think we're like super. On, <laughs> <laughs> I think we're like a couple years off. Actually, on June yeah. June 11th, Shocking. Kennedy was drafted to Raw. On August, uh, Carlito hosted Carlito's Cabana during the segment. Carlito challenged his guest Umaga for the IC title and Kennedy was demanded a shot at the title. Uh, the match was scheduled Kennedy and Carlito in which the winner would see, receive a match against Umaga. Uh, Rigo booked the triple threat match between the three. Umaga retained the title. Uh, Mr. McMahon revealed that Kennedy had been suspended for impersonating yeah, a McMahon. Uh, the angle oh. was written because the name was implicated in a steroid scandal and therefore suspended for 30 days. I don't fucking understand what's going on here. Anyway, he suspended for wellness policy and then uh, he came back in October. He definitely, yeah. So he, so <laughs> back, so when he gets fired is 2009, he gets drafted to Raw. <laughs> in 2009, uh -huh. he's back on Raw from the supplemental draft and then they aired a video package to promote his return and then he, Made his comeback two weeks later in the ten man NWO Lakers uh, NWO NW Lakers. Nuggets. <laughs> NWO Nuggets. That's crazy match where he fucking hurts Randy Orton and then he gets released. <laughs> and then he made a YouTube video where he like he made a YouTube video. NWO Nuggets is even crazier. <laughs> Remember that YouTube video he made where like his. He like supposedly hurt himself or whatever, and then his wrist was fine or something. I don't remember that you. No, I don't. He, he this, like no. was like, I'm gonna be a YouTube guy now and get myself over. And oh, then he made great. like a video where his, his arm was fine or something. <laughs> Me too. I'm trying. <laughs> well, Mr. Kennedy is on Raw in 2007, and it goes swimmingly for him. Yeah, it works out great. You want to? Do you want to hear the supplemental draft real quick? Just uh, throw some sure. names out there for you. Uh sure. Yeah, I guess we're at the end of the draft. So, yeah, go on. Well, uh, who's London going, and Kendrick many... go to Raw from SmackDown. Together, Kenny Dykstra goes to SmackDown from Raw. No. <laughs> he was a big Raw guy. This also, can't be right. Get the fuck off also, my show. Also from the Battle Royale, Viscera goes to ECW. He's a big raw guy. from Raw. Oh, Viscera. That's oh, that's right. He's about to turn into Big Daddy. Um, the Sandman is drafted to Raw from ECW. Crazy. Do you remember that at all? Because I decision. don't at all. Yeah. Uh, I remember him being on Raw. Yeah. Hardcore Holly. Because he. Because Sandman's eventually a part of the fucking angle where they're trying to figure out who Vince's illegitimate son is. Fuck. <laughs> Hardcore Holly went to SmackDown from ECW. No. Mike the Balls Mizan and went to ECW. <laughs> from I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Devario went to Raw from SmackDown. Brett and Brian Major went to SmackDown from ECW. Uh, the fucking Cardoners? Matt Cardoners and Brian Myers. Uh, William Regal went to Raw from SmackDown. Victoria went to SmackDown from Raw. Jillian went to Raw from SmackDown. Eugene went to SmackDown from Raw. No. Uh, Johnny Nitro went to ECW and then eventually won the title. Uh, then Layla went to ECW from SmackDown. That was the supplement. God bless show. Layla. Dude, yeah, Layla, Layla is super bigger, underrated, dude. man. Yeah, she was 100%. fantastic. Awesome. Okay, so now Stone Cold Steve Austin is here. Oh boy, <laughs> dude, this is awesome. I I wish they just like if they would have. I don't know if like do you think they should have just did less of these throughout the night. Why was it three saved hours? It? Well, they they were all three hours. Can you believe that? Every week this was three hours. Wait, what? And James, I'll let you know. Even crazier, still to this day. Wait, 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 twenty twenty two. Wait, 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 wait. Three hours long. Every two thousand seven raw is three <laughs> hours long. I'm pretty sure it starts in 2007. Don't they say this is special, though? Or not? Yeah, I a thought they said three this is special. Oh, really? Because I thought they're all. Maybe let's, I'm wrong. Hold on. Let's let me look, take a look. Take a look. God, I, I hope you're wrong. Okay. I guess not. I guess I guess this was a special one. 
What a horrible choice. But they do. <laughs> <laughs> they do go three hours. It should have been good, man. They eventually go three hours. I don't remember when it is. It's got to be Yeah, like let's 20. see. Where do they go three hours here? Yeah, it's 2012. It looks like it starts. Okay, July 23rd is where it's like official. Full time, yeah. Oh, it's the 1,000th episode of Raw where it starts. And then after that, they are three hours. And then after that, it's always three hours. Forever. Damn. So for 10 years, for 10 years, it's been three hours. Oof. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Fuck. They make, they make a lot of money off that third hour, I tell you what. Yeah, kiss my balls. <laughs> uh, well, Stone Cold is here. <laughs> Stone Cold says, oh, it's Vince McMahon Appreciation Day. Are you kidding me? Since I drove this far, I guess I could, uh, I could say I appreciate the opportunity. I got to drive a beer truck to the ring in Philadelphia and spray your silly ass with beer. That was awesome. I, I appreciate the time you drove your convertible to Nassau Coliseum when I filled that thing with cement and busted out your windows. <laughs> I appreciate the time I got to play Dr. Old Dr. Stone Cold. He does say and that, I, Old Dr. Stone Cold. <laughs> and I bashed your head in with that bedpan. And I guess I can I can thank you for the opportunity for jumping off that Zamboni. I jumped off the hood of it and opened a can of whoop ass on your sorry ass. But above and beyond that, I don't appreciate a goddamn thing you did for anybody. When I taught <laughs> when I walked in the door in 1995, you son of a bitch. <laughs> all you did was see fit to fuck me over. <laughs> Yank away every title I won from you. You're a fucking piece of shit. <laughs> and in my eyes, you're a lying sack of shit. And that's the bottom line. Cause don't go <laughs> so. I think he says fuck you at the end too, does he? I don't know. Fuck you, yeah. But, uh, that's awesome. Johnny's not exaggerating. He says all of that. He says all those curses. And they There's some it out. might be wrong, but he definitely he definitely says all he did was see fit to fuck me over. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure he says fuck. Or, yeah, it's like censored the way through, but uh, you know, it's you can kind of tell by sure, the yeah. sentences. Yeah, <laughs> that was my first. Fuck <laughs> You're me a over. fucking piece of shit. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this was like that was very fun. I like that. Yeah, that was the best. That was so awesome. Like fuck. They couldn't have got, like, The Rock and all them to just do a fucking quick two-minute talk shit about Vince. Ha, ha, hoo, hoo. Yeah, I don't even know Fuck if that would have been in it. I just feel like the whole, like, uh, concept was flawed from the beginning. I don't know. It did. They should. That's how I feel about Raw. I, I, felt like, <laughs> <laughs> I felt like they had done, like, a roast of Vince McMahon or something. It would have been better. But he was doing this, like, weird, like, zombie state thing that he was in. Dude, so. this is like the episode of Futurama where they have Farnsworth have a, a living obituary. <laughs> and they all You're talk right. about his oh life. Oh, my God. And he's like, damn. Damn, I just saw fuck? all my failures right in person, and now I'm going to go yeah. home and die. Well, I'm Captain Lou, and I'm talking to you. I hear you, bro, but I'm trying <laughs> to get out of here. Fuck up. <laughs> all right, sorry. Go to hell. Uh, Vince walks out for his entrance. Uh, yes. Very stoic, very awkward. They're doing concerned voice on commentary, like the voice we were doing during the May Young Moolah segment. That's what they were doing. <laughs> yeah. JR says, you know, I'm not, I'm just saying, and I, I don't know this, but. Vince McMahon, Mr. McMahon might be medicated. <laughs> I don't know what he says medicated. And Jerry Lawler says, no, what do you mean by that? Like, what? And Jerry, you know, I don't know. He just seems strange, you know, somewhat distant, distracted. <laughs> and as you said, yeah, he's just standing in the ring. Everyone's booing. Yeah, the crowd's uh, just chanting, you suck. He's just standing there. <laughs> yeah, dude. Is that, no one, <laughs> the crowd has not grasped that there's something wrong. Ah, uh, fuck you, Vince. Oh, bitch. <laughs> you are a bitch. Uh, so Vince is shaking in the ring, and uh, his hand's shaking and all that. He's looking around. Yeah. He looks all sad. And uh, he says, thank you, but it's not even into the mic. It's just out of his mouth. Yeah, and just, yeah kind of far away from him. He's slowly walking backwards, shaking towards the ropes as he does this, too. Drops the mic, and then Vince gets, gets to the top of the ramp here. He slowly turns around and looks at the crowd, and the camera shows a we don't appreciate you sign, and they're chanting, you Based. suck, you suck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He is, and little they know, he's walking to kill himself. Yeah, as really. They <laughs> as they chant, you suck. So it cuts Crazy. to Gorilla, and uh, Vince is walking through uh, as everyone is standing around. <laughs> You know, as they do, <laughs> they they all stand in a line with a space open in between them, waiting for someone to walk by. And all the you know, all the stars are here, like super crazy and Deuce and Domino <laughs> and Sylvain Grenier. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I you know, I I don't know if 
well, what we're supposed to think here is like this how like it always is like they just wait for their music they're all just standing there waiting for their music to hit and then they'll go out there or Un- unless they were like, it, like unless it was supposed to be like the idea was they wanted us to think that they would be standing there in a row applauding Vince and then nobody like everyone he walks back and nobody's saying anything to him I like to think this is how like a video game is like the menu is like that like here's all the characters and then they all walk out they're just standing that's there awesome. waiting yeah that's cool as um fun. so Vince walks down the fucking aisle and he takes a left <laughs> and as he takes a left on the right hand side of the screen is Paul London <laughs> the happiest he has ever been in his he life could, he could not have been fucking happier gigantic smile on his face in his everyone's in their gear by the way because they're getting ready to get picked to go out <laughs> of course Paul London has never smiled this big ever in his life. No. no. And what's even crazier, because, you know, I, I think history has shown that Paul London got a lot of fucking heat for that. I think I brought this up on the show before, that Paul London's talked about this recently and said they filmed this exact scene like seven times, and he smiled through <laughs> all of them, and they never told him not to, <laughs> which is even crazier. It's the craziest <laughs> smile, man. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like a like it's a ser- It's like he planted the bomb. That's what it looks like. <laughs> so uh, as he walks to the left, he gets down, and Coachman runs after him, and he stops Vince, and he says, "Vince, Vince, Vince, your limo is the other way." You're going the wrong way, which, what the fuck was Vince contemplating not blowing up tonight? Is that what that was trying to be? I think uh, I, a dramatic he, scene there. Yeah, maybe. Uh, maybe you'll be able to shine some light on this uh, in the observers or something. Or a sure, more. but there, I, there's a bit, but there's nothing like because obviously this doesn't last. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> uh, but so Vince McMahon turns around and then starts walking the other way. And of course, he walks by more of the WWE superstars. <laughs> of course, the roster, who are all looking as natural as ever, you know, with their fucking gear on, <laughs> standing in a line <laughs> sideways. <laughs> like, and, uh, they walk by, like, uh, Extreme Expose, and you see Brooke Tessmacher there, just full hand on hip, looking gr- like awesome. Like, yeah. I was like, oh, wow, she's hitting it. Shit. All right, cool. Uh, so the Stooges are there with a cup of coffee. And uh, Vince then walks out the door. Yes, he takes one last look behind him, deep breath, walks out, walks out the door, and takes in a deep breath of air as he goes outside, and he starts to walk to the limo. And All the sound has just stopped, by the way. It's just outside sound now. Uh, Right, yeah, so it's... There's two guys sitting on a trunk out there eating snacks. One guy has an eagle's hat. Go birds. <laughs> Is uh, he really? I didn't even see that. <laughs> yeah, because it's in Pennsylvania. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, of course, I saw that. Go birds, baby. What the hell? <laughs> uh, what do you think of Vince Donovan starts- McNabb? Love that Donovan. He was who I always played as in NFL Street. Terrell Owens. <laughs> my mom hates Tio. <laughs> oh, really? Because <laughs> of the dogs, of course. Oh, of course. <laughs> Never forgive him for the dogs. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, Vince, so Vince is walking, and he stops. He turns back and looks at these two guys who are no selling them. They're just enjoying their snacks. They're probably eating a peanut chew. A long right? day. You know, I'm, yeah, it's been a long, shitty hours. show. <laughs> that's what they're probably talking about that's probably what he heard him say too he's like what'd you, what'd you say that's what they said the bank it's been a long shitty day this, yeah, they, sh- this show sucks yeah, this, this is a horrible show I hope Vince kills himself <laughs> 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 Vince turns around and says hey what did he say <laughs> nothing I hope somebody rigged this bomb and explosives nothing big here. man I'll kill you US Navy style <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I was what? underwater. Wait, what? <laughs> Jesse, the body of a turn? Oh my he god. He pops out of the trunk. Where are you going? <laughs> are you going to go into that limo or are you going to serve your country, Vince? I was underwater for 500 days. I was drowning. <laughs> <laughs> I drowned for this country, sir. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Vince turns around and for those of you guys there, he turns back around and starts walking towards the limo again. He does it twice. Yeah, because uh, the last time you heard Jesse the Body Ventura. <laughs> <laughs> you're a coward. I was in the Navy SEALs. You're a coward, Vince. You never serve your country. <laughs> if you don't serve your country, Vince, you should just get in that limo and kill yourself today. 
<laughs> if, we, if we were in the army, that limo wouldn't explode. <laughs> I would drown you in that limo. It would be underwater. It'd be, it would be a submarine. <laughs> because I There's was no in the U.S. Navy SEALs and you weren't. Got a new albano here. <laughs> no. <laughs> And I'm talking to you. It was Devin Lou Albano and Jesse the Bunny Ventura in an Eagles and, shirt. Ah, boo, I play rocket ball. <laughs> <laughs> so Vince then turns back around after hearing Jesse and he walks towards the limo. Seal fucker. <laughs> <laughs> That was that. So he turns back Sorry. around and he starts walking towards the limo again. <laughs> it's like in Metal Gear, you just throw a penny yeah. at the floor. Uh, uh, yeah, tap so, on the wall. Dun, dun. Yeah. Huh? Uh. <laughs> Big exclamation point comes up across your head. Huh? <laughs> so it must have been nothing. <laughs> 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 That's Vince that he keeps walking. <laughs> like he's walking. Huh? What's been uh, <laughs> Holy shit. So Vince uh, then gets to the limo. Correct. And he hesitates to open the door. Do limos usually have no back window? Uh, well, you're Jesse the Body Ventura. <laughs> and now he's very, and I'm very Captain Lou and I'm driving with you. <laughs> Captain Lou's in the limo. <laughs> Where to, <do> Vince? <laughs> my house probably i'm captain lou i'm talking to you time to enlist Vince. <laughs> <laughs> all of a sudden in, in everybody everybody that talked about him is in the limo waiting for him <laughs> all holding a stick of dynamite <laughs> 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 it's Stone Cold Steve Austin, the one that lights it. <laughs> so Vince has Fuck a, you. <laughs> Vince has a taste to open the door because he's contemplating if he wants to be in this he car said, with Jesse. There's Vittorio. like a one in a million chance there's dynamite in here. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Okay, there's no way. There's no fucking there way. Can't be there is no here, fucking honey. way. There's dynamite." I mean, those in here. guys just told them, told me that they wanted me to kill myself <laughs> and hope this limo blows up. But there's, there's no, there's way. no there way. Right. That's a coincidence. And like, there's just no way. So one foot out, and then Vince puts the foot in and he closes the door, and it explodes because there was dynamite. <laughs> Dynamite. AEW <laughs> wins again. Yeah. <laughs> so the limo explodes into uh, uh, smithereens. This is a explosion like no other. They blow this some bitch up. It's awesome. It fucking it explodes. It's cool on explosion. fire. Yeah. The last thing you see before the show ends is for more information, go to WWE.com. That's the last thing you read on the screen with this <laughs> fucking on fire limo. Yeah, it like starts painting to black and you just hear in the background, Vince, Vince. <laughs> <laughs> you still got to enlist. <laughs> you can't get out of your duties we as an American. We take McMahon. people like this now. <laughs> <laughs> McMahon, you have a civil duty. <laughs> Vince, Vince fucking killed himself. <laughs> Vince, you can't get out of this. I was Vince. swimming in the lake, Lake Titicaca, and the sharks were. Was <laughs> hesitating to go in the thing. He's like, <laughs> Vince, wait. <laughs> He was like, I can either, he's like, I enlist or I don't. He's out killing myself. <laughs> I can save him. I'll go get him. <laughs> Jesse Victoria climbing into the flaming limo to pull up Vince's body. Not because he wants him to not die, but because he wants him to be a USB <laughs> <laughs> what's the, what's the out again? There's no fire underwater, Vince. Opens <laughs> <laughs> the door, and he fucking goes. Okay, Vince. is it listing really that bad, Vince? <laughs> he says, "All right, fuck it." Closes the door. <laughs> Oh 
my fucking god. Oh, fucking Holy shit. <laughs> oh my fucking god. <laughs> Bitch, you haven't met dictator yet <laughs> of the world. I'm killing myself. McMahon, dictator is here. Get out of the limo. Bitch is burning dead. Get out of there. Stay in attention, son. I don't see no beard on you, McMahon. Get out of that limo. <laughs> Oh my god. You can't disrespect oh. dictator like this. Oh my god, I'm, I'm getting like an ad workout right now, man. This is fucked up. <laughs> Holy shit. All right, Vince, so... stay there. I'll get the U.S. underwater demolition SEAL team to get you out of there. And we'll sign you up right now. <laughs> we'll get that signature, son. Wow. So that's the end of Raw. Um, for some reason, the commentary doesn't seem to care or like... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no one, there's no feed of anything. You don't like the crowd, you don't hear React, you don't hear JR or Lawler or anybody. Uh, nobody m immediately runs out from inside after hearing a explosion. <laughs> yeah, just not like interested. There's, there's nobody no, the camera here. have to yeah. get like eight different angles of the shot, though, so don't worry about that. A lot of cool angles. I mean, it did look cool. I'll give them that. Yeah, I guess, cool. uh, you know, I, I think I remember reading that a lot of people in the crowd like called the police. Yeah, yeah, there's some, I'll, there, I think there's a couple things in the Observer, John, about that. Um, just as a little follow-up, though, uh, the following Raw, some fucking investigator, they do a video package at the top here showing, like, you know, the explosion and people leaving stuff at WWE headquarters for Vince, like, he died. And they say, uh, we hope to get some answers shortly, and the McMahon family wants to ensure the public that the company uh, wants the show to go on. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> and then the end of that Raw, Stephanie comes out crying and says there will be vengeance on when my family finds out who did this to my dad. And she looks up at this guy and says, I love you, dad. <laughs> God cries damn. and leaves. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Crazy. So here's some observer stuff uh, from this happening here. Um, it's uh, Alvarez. <laughs> oh, here we go. Um, from the Figure Four Wrestling Newsletter, June 18th, 2007. The defining moment of Vince McMahon's life ended up being his death. <laughs> in the final scene of the June 11th Raw, which was a combo draft show in Vince McMahon Appreciation Night, the chairman stepped into the limo, which promptly exploded. Raw went off the, off the air with a graphic politely telling people to check WWE.com for more info. Yes, this is the end of Vince McMahon character in WWE, at least for the time being. It would not be the first fake death in WWE history as several people, including Tori Wilson's father, Al, Big Show's dad, Al Snow's dog, Pepper, and Paul Bearer all passed away in storyline. Yeah, the receipts. Really, yes. Really, the death of Bearer was more outrageous than Vince's as he was murdered when Undertaker drowned him in cement, which then hardened around his corpse. Undertaker was not prosecuted. <laughs> <laughs> Though karma did work in his disfavor when he tore his bicep and was forced to relinquish the WWE title during what was planned to be a long title reign. Obviously because no body was found, it opens the door for him to return someday. The original limousine explosion was taped Sunday night at the building with an entire stunt team and crew. Obviously nobody was hurt for real. They blew it up again on Monday night during the Raw broadcast so fans could flood out of the building and see the flaming wreckage. I didn't realize that. That's pretty fucking cool. People were talking about it all night. A few media outlets even brought it up as a real uh, story, and I presume those people are feeling pretty stupid today. WB Tuesday flew the WB flag at half mass. <laughs> oh my! And on, Sm and on SmackDown, they did a ten bell salute for Vince, which was booed by all the fans. <laughs> wow! Uh, from the Figure Four uh, Wrestling Newsletter, uh, June twenty fifth, two thousand seven. There was very serious talk Friday about ending the Vince McMahon is dead angle once Sherry Martel died for real. Uh... Over the weekend, the decision was made to go full bore with Sherry death coverage and tributes on the website and to keep the Vince angle strong on television. On Monday, Kevin Dunn stated that there would be no mention of Sherry on the show because the reality of her death would disconnect fans from the storyline of Vince McMahon's death. I'm not making this up. Holy shit. There were, <laughs> there were a lot of people lobbying all day for that to be changed. In a very last minute decision, the compromise was made to put up a graphic an hour and 20 minutes into the show just prior to the women's match. A number of agents who were very close to her lobbied hard all afternoon and finally managed to get it done. Uh, Michael Hayes spearheaded the movement, and since he has the most power of any of the agents these days, it got done. Uh, head Raw writer Brian Gerwitz fought hard for it to not happen, but in the end, he lost out. Which, what a crazy fucking situation that yeah, is. Yeah, really, to, that like, is crazy. Keeping kayfabe so you can't talk about the 
dead fucking person that did a ton for your company and was yeah. like over as hell during that period. Fuck. Um, the, pl the plan of this past week, and keep in mind how quickly things changed, was that Vince would be presumed dead for about a month or so. When the angle was first conceived, he was going to be gone for a long, long time, indefinitely, in fact. But then when the angle went down, everyone said he now he had to come back, and I at least figured there would be no way Vince McMahon would be able to stay out of the spotlight for more than a few weeks or so. The idea was to go heavy with it, meaning Linda would make all of his corporate appearances. He would never be seen, etc. WWE is also uh, auctioning off <laughs> the side mirror of Vince's limo, <laughs> which is also fucking what crazy. The hell? So then I also I was looking up other stuff because uh, I was like, what? Because I don't know if we ever really got a definitive like what this was supposed to fucking be. Right. Yeah. Because uh, for those that don't know, I guess you know maybe some people don't know this was. Stopped because of the Chris Benoit thing. Chris Benoit stuff happens, what, two weeks, yeah, so three they weeks do, after they this? They do that. The limo blows up, then the Stephanie thing, the next draw, and then Benoit, the next draw, I think, right? Right, because Benoit, ha that's the, that's Because it's right after the is... Night of Champions Vengeance thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah, They the Monday after the Night of Champions Vengeance, they do the Benoit tribute, then they take it back on ECW the next night. Yeah, that's and when, then, uh, and then that's when Vince, Vince comes, comes out and says, yeah, that was the storyline, but this is real life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's obvious, but so I don't know if do you guys remember hearing like what you may have remembered of of hearing like what this was supposed to be? I feel like I always hear more about the fucking like you know Ken Kennedy was supposed to be Vince's son. <laughs> yeah, I hear that stuff, but I don't know if I ever really remember much about like if anyone, even the writers, and maybe they have, and maybe uh, people can tell us when they listen to this, like what it was supposed to be. Was it supposed to be Kennedy or? Uh, did or you say what? that Vince was going to, what say, did you say something about Vince coming back? I can't remember what you're saying, but it said he, you know, he was going to come back sooner than they really were going to say. Yeah, but I like, feel like sooner than he was supposed to. I feel like what I remember, I don't know what, if this is true or not, but it was like, uh, he was just faking his own death or something. Was the story? Line. I remember that one too. That's what I, I remember. Do remember that's, that one that's too. what I, I like, thought the ending was like, uh, it was him faking his own death for whatever reason. Yeah. I don't remember why. Um, I read a thing here that, uh, this kind of ties into it here. Uh, Mr. Kennedy was supposed to be Vince's illegitimate son. Then he got himself a wellness policy viola violation. This was going to be the original angle for the who killed Vince McMahon angle. Uh, and then some weeks after, uh, Vince's funeral on the show. Wow. Uh, oh, sorry. Okay. So, uh, that was supposed to be the original angle for the who killed Vince McMahon angle. Apparently the night Benoit died, the murderer, quote unquote, of Vince was supposed to be revealed to be Linda McMahon, who would be arrested at the show. Some weeks after the funeral, which would be, which would have included Vince's real life older brother, Roderick McMahon, the third and his kids, <laughs> who? there would be a supposed, <laughs> there would be a supposed, uh, there was supposed to be an aired will reading by Mr. McMahon himself, wherein he would leave the entire WWE in the hands of his illegitimate son, Mr. Kennedy. Uh, this was meant to turn Kennedy into a massive heel and give him a, ma a mega push to the championship. At that point, Stephanie and Triple H were going to reveal their kayfabe second consensual marriage based on the real one that would entitle Triple H to combat Mr. Kennedy for the right to own WWE, culminating in a feud that would push all the way to the main event of that year's WrestleMania. And then after that was finished, Triple H would win control back of the company. Then Vince was meant to come back and reveal he'd faked the whole thing and set Linda up to take the fall so that he could give everything to his true son. Wow. So it would have led to Mr. <laughs> Mr. Kennedy versus Triple H at Mania for the rights to the WWE. <laughs> Vince had to kill himself to get what this the kid over. So they did that, <laughs> but I guess it just would have uh, turned into like the illegitimate son angle, kind of or whatever that they. I ended mean, that's, up doing. yeah, I think that's kind of so just what. The, and but then that also got scrapped too because Kennedy gets a wellness violation. Yeah, and then and they it was just, just horns. <laughs> well, it's just horns The yeah. biggest angle that they didn't know they had on their hands was the NWO Lakers <laughs> versus the NWO Nuggets. <laughs> well, dude, it was right at their fingertips. They just how didn't they didn't know yet. I don't understand how they couldn't have fucking, I mean, that was God truly damn. the end game for Vince killing himself was NWO Lakers versus <laughs> NWO Nuggets. 100%. But yeah, that, uh, I mean, I so believe the whole much... like, uh, Linda did it thing. Cause like, uh, you know, they showed all the horrible things Vince did throughout the years and whatever, and then yeah. there's, like, motive there for her to do it or whatever, I guess. Sure. But, yeah, fuck, yeah. That's crazy. Crazy, crazy shit. Oh, also, uh, WSX sent out a press release that Ricky Mandaris has been stripped of the WSX heavyweight title. No. Uh, he blew up in a coffin, uh, and they claimed he was being held as a person of interest in the death of Vince McMahon. <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck? 
<laughs> That's incredible. He blew up a coffin to win the title, and so they thought that his enemy also is being considered to be a blown up Vince McMahon, <laughs> which would have been awesome. <laughs> Very cool. Well, that is it uh, for the fucking Dude. three hour episode Dude, of this, this is shit. Abysmal, man. You, you guys ain't nothing else going on in 2007?